step into the day with the dawn ringing in my ears oh well i tune to my tv show no better way i gotta get myself into gear let's go Very good morning and welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast Show on this Wednesday morning. Espresso is live, Yay. large and oh, in charge, we baby. Here. We are absolutely here. to beat here. you to that. <laughs> Listen, yesterday's uh, movie review with JP Sebastian was quite alarming. Wow. He just doesn't like emojis, but we do love them. In fact, we, we include them in, in a game that uh, we play that we try and get you to guess movie names, song names. So we want to see whether you can crack our emoji game. Oh, exciting things. And then, of course, Northwest University flying the South African flag extremely high when they took part in a cricket league in Sri Lanka. We'll be catching up with the Pukka captain. Lacka in the e boys. <laughs> Lacka in the e Nick in Darcy. In and then this morning we're talking about a very important topic, the importance of touch mm -hmm. in child development and what it means for your child to feel that it's really important. Yeah, so, yeah. Everything those little hands and feet and what they need to feel. And then we also have an, a, a performance coming your way from Amanda Tiffin, who will be colouring in our Feel Good studio today with beautiful, beautiful melodies. So stay tuned for that and more on your if you feel good breakfast show right now, let's start the day and take a look at the temperatures all around our cities. Thank you very much, team, and a very warm welcome from my side as well on your Feel Good Wednesday. Let's kick it off with your weather and temperatures, and it uh, seems like the northeastern parts of the country can experience warm temperatures today, while cooler conditions are expected along the coast with a couple of showers in certain areas as well. Ons laat bij vannacht weer haar temperatuur op alle kwaan en skop af op 13, dat stijgt naar maximum 26, Mobella 15 en een matige 24, Pretoria 14, 29, Johannesburg begin op 12 graden minimum en een maximum van 28 graden, Mike. 15 en een warm 30. Klerksdorp 16 en ook baie warm 32 graden. Kimberley 16, 33. Bloemfonteins kop af op 11 graden minimum en stijgt naar 30 graden maximum. Richards Bay 15 en een matige 24. Peter Marsburg 12, 23. Durban 17, 22. Tata starting off on 10 with a maximum of 19 with some showers expected throughout the course of the day. Also some showers expected for East London today. 15 minimum with a maximum of 19. Craddock 9, 27. Port Elizabeth 15. And a maximum of 19 degrees. George 12, 20. Sutherland on 11 degrees minimum, reaching a maximum of 25. Cape Town 13, 24. Worcester 12, 26. Springbok starting off on 15, reaching a nice and hot maximum of 32. And Uppington on 20, and very hot late on today, 35 degrees. That's a wrap of your weather for the 6.30 Bulletin. As always, we'll keep you updated with the weather and temperatures throughout the course of your morning. I'm back just after 7 o'clock with another look. Well, let's take a look at your roads on starting off your Wednesday morning in Boysons. There's been an accident on the M1 northbound that's at the Crown Interchange. You can expect delays approaching the scene. Then in the Western Cape and Guguletu along the N2 inbound, traffic is slow moving. That's between Mew Way and Borchard's Quarry Road exit. That's where we leave your traffic for now. I'll bring you another update in half an hour's time. <laughs> Well, it's Wellness Wednesday, and we're asking you on social media this morning, what are some of the best natural remedies that your grandparents or friends have told you to use? Uh, let's see, Garth Lafleur says, good morning, peeps. The remedies that my grandmother gave me is, um, uh, while it's uh, bitter, but it will heal you in time. Okay, cool. We're still waiting to find out what that is. Uh, Betty says, for colds or flu, they say a cup of stony ginger beer with a disparin dissolved in it. I've heard about that one before. Uh, Kevin said, they told me to cook traditional food. All right. Uh, says, I am diabetic and my mom used Levin's essence and Jamaica ginger on an empty stomach. And it goes on. And then Blessing says, I've uh, been told to cook traditional food sometimes. Times. And then Homolemo says, my grandmother used to tell me to cook traditional food. Very, very interesting. Let us know what traditional remedies you use on this Wellness Wednesday. Yo, that just brought back so many memories. My grandmother used to boil up some plant called bendreid or like lingana, which was like some 
odd plant grown in the backyard. When you boil it, it goes like all green, but the smell was disgusting. <laughs> and you bring it back for your memories. And she swore that it would like cure anything. Uh, <laughs> anyway. I think a lot of people also believe buchu, buchu plants. It could have been something like that. Anyway, uh, it's time for us to have a little bit of fun right now to know whether your knowledge is on point when it comes to entertainment. And of course, we do this with a game of emoji charades. We show you some emojis, give you some clues, and you guess whether it's a movie, it's a TV show, it's a song. And then, uh, of course, how many words a title has in it. So let's take a look at today's game. But don't worry, Boom. we'll give you a few clues to help you out. Yeah, so da, da, it's like da, da. a little marker board there. Four words, there's a laugh, there's a smile, there's cool shirts, there's swords. I was what more thinking have? of masks, but you okay. can see it however you want to. Now, mm -hmm. the first clue for you is this America film was released in 1998. It's based on the character of a masked outlaw, a mysterious swordsman, and the film starred Anthony Hopkins, Antonio Banderas, and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Okay, okay. I'm not quite sure how you could... Okay, so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. You no, got no, no, no. it. It's just You've got, got it. it. Got it. Okay. So, the uh, <laughs> question is, do you have it? If you know the name of the movie, the series, or the song, let us know on Facebook or on Twitter using our hashtag Expresso Show. And, of course, try out our Emoji Charades game. Ah, very cool. I think I've got it. Yeah, okay. it was pretty easy. It's pretty today. easy. It's yeah. pretty easy, but we'll reveal those answers a little bit later on. We're going to take a very quick ad break. When we come back, very good news for South Africa, especially for campus cricket teams, as we beat Sri Lanka. We'll bring you the lowdown in just a bit. And then we're chatting about the importance of ch a touch in your child's development with our parenting expert. So don't move a muscle. We'll be right back. Oh, you can make my day. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Good morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sleeping. Still sleeping. Okay, thank you. There we go. Uh, It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome.
welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's Espresso. Time for us to find out what our local stars have been up to as we take a look at our Mzanzi Wood news. Yes, good news? well, very good news. Yes. Our choreographer and dancer Takis Maswangani uh, may be a few months pregnant, but she's not letting that change her fitness routine one bit. So taking to Instagram, the mom-to-be shared several, several clips of herself working out and proudly showing off her baby bum. And while she says that being pregnant can be exhausting getting into the gym and working out always has her feeling so much better so uh, if Takis has anything to go by then uh, let's just say that her little one is sure to be very active as well I've been in a few gym classes where the pregnant mamas have put me to shame really? like some <gasps> ladies are just really on point when it comes to their fitness during their pregnancy yeah I think it's pretty awesome well something else that's very awesome Louisa Bala may be one of South Africa's best in R&B but he is adding yet another name to his title or is he adding one that's what we're asking taking to Instagram the musician shared several photos of himself uh, including uh, being with another with a group of people uh, in Jerusalem and uh, you know he was singing to them he was floating in the Dead Sea you know some moments of praise and worship there we know that uh, you know Louisa has a very deep love for God and is involved mm. in gospel music as well so I think this is absolutely awesome so who knows maybe he's 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 preparing for something more I don't know but, but this is a very incredible experience and I'm so happy that he got a chance to have it and his message comes through powerfully through his gospel music Absolutely. and imagine he you know becomes the father or the priest of a church and how praise and worship yeah. would be there yeah no that's amazing he really has a deep love for god so yeah. it's cool absolutely amazing Yay. well that was our local entertainment news for you this morning on your feel good breakfast show stick around we'll bring you international entertainment news shortly Thank you so much, ladies. So from entertainment news to movie news right now, and this week the Expresso Numeto Movie Club was, uh, has a prize that will definitely make every Spy fan super jealous. Tickets to see Kingsman, The Golden Circle, a week before everyone else exclusively in 4DX. Now this time, The Kingsman's Journey leads them to the discovery of an allied spy organization in the US, where these two elite secret organizations must then band together. Now you can experience the spy adventure thriller in New Metro's multi-sensory 4DX cinemas, an exhilarating cinema experience with high-tech motion seats and special environmental effects only at the v and Waterfront in Cape Town, the Pavilion in Durban, Midland Park in Pretoria, Hyde Park and Empress Palace in Johannesburg. Now stand a chance to win double tickets to see Kingsman, the Golden Circle in 4DX at New Metro. Simply SMS the keyword Kingsman plus your name and city to 40675. And then remember, you need to add the city in which you're able to watch the screening as well. Now, T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com. The competition closes at uh, midnight on the 22nd of September. So it's just around the corner. That's this coming Friday. So we'll uh, make sure you get your entries in. Now, the big question, will the agencies work together to defeat a common enemy or will they turn against each other? You can find out in Kingsman, the Golden Circle. Find the best entertainment at New Metro Cinemas. It's your scene. so so much checking one two i'll start again shall i i was talking about this past weekend where the south african cricket team of the northwest university uh, stormed to victory against the sri lankan boys in gala sri lanka and this was at the campus cricket league that took place this past weekend the picker boys beat the defending champions and hosts sri lanka's business management school by a convincing seven wickets which is a great victory indeed and right now we're about to chat to uh, the captain of the picker boys vian liber who joins us on the line good morning vian uh, good morning, Katleko. Oh, man, it's so good to be speaking to you. Very, very proud of you on your impressive win this past weekend. I've got to ask, first of all, what the spirit in the camp is like at the moment and if the team is still riding high on that wave of victory. Yeah, look, thanks very much, first of all. I think um, we've, we've been wanting to win this Red Bull Campus Cricket Challenge for a while. So I think the spirits are still quite high, but reality struck as we got back home. Uh, a lot of the boys have semester tests this week, so uh, <laughs> the party didn't last too long. But uh, yeah, we, we, we're still happy. We're still still flying a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure there's still a chance, that, that, that second opportunity, but don't bank too much on that. But um, of course, you guys <laughs> came up against some very stiff competition. In fact, some of the best university teams from all around the world. So how tough was the competition actually? And your, what was your expectation going into that tournament? Going into the tournament, we didn't really know exactly what to expect. We spoke to a couple of the Tuckies boys who went last year and the year before, 
And uh, obviously they didn't win last year, so we thought that the competition would be tough. Um, but I think the fact that we've, or South Africa, have won it three out of four times shows the, the structures that we had in place. And because our university system is actually a feeder system for our first-class teams, mm-hmm. it, it makes our university teams quite strong. So when we got there, there were, there were a couple of teams that were tough to beat, yes. Um, but I think the, the standard that we play in uh, prepared us very well for, for what was to come. So it made it a little bit easier on us, if I can put it to you that way. Yeah, and then, of course, speaking about the fact that the varsity cricket system does feed into the first-class system, I understand uh, that in your own personal game, you're going to be stepping out for the Nelson Mandela Bay Stars in the upcoming T20 Global League with the likes of Mark Boucher, Imran Tahir, and Makaya Dini on your side. So what are you hoping to bring to the team and, of course, gain in terms of your experience, in terms of your own game? Yeah, look, uh... In terms of in terms of my game, I think I'm a very p- positive person, and I try to try to keep the team as positive as I can. So, from a personal perspective, I think that's what I can bring to the party. I don't think I'm going to tell the, the likes of those guys what to do. Um, <laughs> I think I'd rather try and learn as much as as much as possible from them. Um, yeah, look, I think like I just said, they've got a lot of experience between them. Uh, Coach Mark, obviously. He's he's new in, new in the coaching structures, but he's been around forever and he's he's played all around the world. So I think the experience he's he's got is is something to look forward to for, as a, as a learning base. So I'm looking forward to learning as much as I can from them, um, as well as the other players. I think Macarantini would love to learn learn from a bowler's point of view what what he's got and what what plans he's got towards the game. So yeah, just looking forward to learning and uh, enjoying the moment. Oh man, listen, uh, just one more time to you and the rest of the Pucker team. We are so incredibly proud of you. I'm a martyr. Dude, uh, congratulations to you and good luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Uh, that's Vian Liver over there, the captain of the Northwest University's cricket side that this past weekend won in the varsity or the campus cricket league all the way in Gale, Sri Lanka, beating out the hosts and the defending champions. <clears throat> Many families and parents are feeling overwhelmed and there is a sense of people wanting to trade chaos for calm. Wouldn't we love to all do that? As we move into spring, the season of renewal, we speak to our creative parenting expert, Nikki Bush, about the trend towards minimalistic parenting. Ah, oh, we're at that easy, (laughs) Nikki. I mean, life (laughs) is crazy. Does it have to be crazy? Um... Is there a natural desire for this to happen? Are we moving in that way in, in all, I think, levels of life? Uh, what, what's going on in the world at the moment? <laughs> is, it, is it just crazy? Is it chaos? Or can we live a simpler life? Uh, well, I think both you and I are, are sitting in that situation <laughs> of going, stop the world, I want to get off. And there was this lovely quote by Danae Barahon, who is a family wellness expert. She says, overwhelm is not a life sentence. It's a choice. Uh-huh. And I think sometimes we are so so on that treadmill we're so close against that window pane that we lose our perspective and i think spring is a nice time to kind of take a few steps backwards and i mean just for my own life we've been doing some decluttering Uh and chucking out stuff when you've lived in the same place for a long time you get overwhelmed just with stuff let alone the busyness of life so one does need to every now and again just take a little look a step back and say what needs to give because we actually can't keep doing everything Just all of take the time. A breath. Why do we feel overwhelmed? What is actually happening within us and within that dynamic internally and within a, a living space that gets us to feel overwhelmed? What is actually going on? Well, we're on a treadmill, and I think once you add children into the mix, you're not just looking after yourself. Oh, you're you're on looking a treadmill after you're <laughs> It's a juggle. It absolutely <laughs> is a juggle. And everybody has different demands at different times. And obviously, you've got to make sure that the basics are actually covered. Uh, so, you know, feeding your family, uh, earning the money to, to afford your family. You know, all these things are, they're not without their stresses, that's for sure. But I think sometimes we also buy into what society is demanding Mm. as opposed to setting our own agenda. And I I think that's probably the message of this conversation this morning is what do you value and what's important to you? And are you comparing yourself to your best friend and your neighbors and every Tom, Dick and Harry and saying our life must look like that? (laughs) Or are you actually investigating how life feels for you because if life is feeling 
hideous and that you're just doing this all the time, you've got to step back and say, what do we need to take out of this mix? Is it possible to take anything out or can we reschedule or reprioritize so that maybe family remains the cent central core, the value that we commit to? Because remember that family is where hope lives for children. If we get so busy that family life disintegrates, what are we giving them? What is that thing that is their mainstay that, that gives them that support and that stability? That inspires them. Um, just very quickly, though, obviously business is important in my life. I need the kids need new shoes. Yes. You've got to be working. <laughs> How do you, in a concrete way, prioritize family ahead of business? Well, children don't mind if we work and they don't mind if we're busy. But when we're with them, they want more of our happiness and less of our stress. So it's actually learning how to be in the moment when we're with them, how to leave work at the door, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes. And this is that state of mindfulness and presence, which is quite tricky. It is very tricky and it's, it's probably the biggest 21st century challenge for busy parents. But there is an opportunity in that and I have a feeling that with the physical opportunity to declutter our lives and simplify, there is an emotional opportunity within that as well. And we're going to get into to exactly how we can declutter <clears throat> the emotional relationship we have with our child and delve a little deeper into that. Stay tuned. A very important discussion on so many levels. That's absolutely amazing. Very, very important topics. And I love the fact that touch is so important in a child's development. While still to come after the break, we take a look at viral videos this morning and a parrot attempts to pull out a Ooh. tooth. That's going to be interesting. I, you see, I hate the dentist, so maybe I should go that route. <laughs> and then listen, also coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast show, the Jazz Masters tribute show is taking place at the Artscape at the end of the month. And to give you a sneak peek, we have Amanda Tiffin in your, on your Feel Good Breakfast show. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you after the break. It's my feel-good breakfast show. At Samsung, we develop technology so you can live life. Samsung, a way of life. 
Welcome to it. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso right here on SABC3. It's a Wednesday morning, the middle of the week, downhill to the weekend from here on out. But stick around with us. We'll make you feel good, definitely. So let's quickly take a look at some of the uh, funny, random and interesting things that happened on social media. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I've Girls. got one. All yeah. right. So this little boy and his cat thought that the two of them have what it takes to catch a rat that was just running amok in their house. Uh, let's see who came out victorious. The duo of the boy and the cat. Oh, no. At one stage, I thought that was the rat. Oh, <laughs> the scream like, was so hot. Ah, like Mariah Carey couldn't do that. Like, I wanted to escape though. <laughs> you're, you're, that was that incredible. That is a gangster okay, please rat. Please never uh -oh. let a rat like that cross my path. Don't be that guy. Yeah, no. 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 I didn't even see the rat. You didn't? I didn't it was, it was the there in the corner. It was there. It was there. Oh, okay. and while, while the cat was scratching on the door. Like, <laughs> 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 well, listen, something else I also found on the interwebs for us was very interesting was, how's this? You know, growing up, you lose your milk tooth. They're a little wiggly. They're a little stubborn. So we've seen the door trick. We've been to the dentist. But how's this? A parrot helping out a young boy. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 he took it out. What? Oh, cute. Super creepy. <laughs> Guys, look, creepy. I mean, I understand that parrots are, have above average intelligence, but where do you begin to teach your parrot that, hey, here's tooth, this is, Polly uh, wanted two thirds. And also, this is the loose one. Polly a molar, <laughs> uh, but I, I think... I think he was a dentist in his previous life, that bird. Or, or maybe the kid's <laughs> teeth were so yellow he thought, Millie. They looked like corn. <laughs> <laughs> That's possible. That's very possible. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Anyway, so those are some of the stories that we were able to rack up that put a smile on our faces. Hopefully they did the same for you. Uh, share your stories with us on our social media platforms and of course use our hashtag Expresso Show. Now, one of the most well-known and respected genres in music is jazz, loved and enjoyed by many. Well-known jazz legends are fine-tuning their musical instruments and polishing up their voices to deliver a life changing musical experience during the three-day concert series Jazz Masters Tribute to be showcased at the Artscape Theatre Centre from the 28th until the 30th of September at 8 p.m. Now the lineup also includes one of Cape Town's best loved pianists and vocalists Amanda Tiffin who joins us this morning to perform A Woman Like Me.
Tiffin on your feel-good breakfast show. Thank you so, so much for the beautiful music. And you can catch her live performing at the Jazz Masters Tribute Showcase at the Artscape Theatre Centre from the 28th to the 30th of September at 8 p.m. We'll have more from Amanda a little bit later on. In the meantime, link up with us on Facebook and on our uh, social media platforms and let us know what you thought about that beautiful performance of A Woman Like Me. In the national news, the South African Social Security Agency, known as SASA, is expected to sign a contract with the post office to take over the payment of social grants by next Thursday. This comes after the initial deadline for finalizing an agreement was moved twice. Chairperson of Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts, Scopa Timber Gordy, said that the committee has been given the assurance from the post office that if a contract is signed with SASA this month, it will be ready to take over from CPS by next year's month. March deadline. Trade Union Solidarity has won its appeal to the South African Human Rights Commission regarding the exclusion of white males from South African Airways' cadet program. This finding reverses the previous one which found that the program did not appear to be unlawful. Solidarity argued that SAA's program was not flexible and represented a rigid quota system, while the SAHRC contended that affirmative action must promote social cohesion and not deepen divisions. Now moving further abroad, U.S. President Donald Trump has urged United Nations member states to turn up the pressure on North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons using his maiden speech to the world body to address what he has said is the top global challenge. Beginning his speech shortly after arriving at the U.N. headquarters in New York, Trump said the world faces destructive threats from rogue states, terrorists and extremists. It was Trump's first appearance in the green marble UN General Assembly Hall, where applause from world leaders is generally muted. And then finally, North Korean workers will start leaving Qatar and Kuwait after the Gulf Arab states said that uh, they would stop renewing visas, cutting off a source of foreign income for Pyongyang. The decision comes after new sanctions on North Korea was implemented this year, which also saw Kuwait expel the ambassador and downgrade ties. Several thousand North Korean workers reside in the U.S. allied Gulf region, mainly working on construction sites. Well, that was your 7 o'clock news update. Let's get a look at what's happening in the world of sport with Ewan. Thank you so much, Leanne, and a very good morning to our sports fans as well as running through your sport headlines on your Wednesday morning. Now, pace bowler Vernon Philander has been ruled out of the Proteas' upcoming first test against Bangladesh. Now, Philander is still recovering from a lower back injury he picked up while fielding during South Africa's four-match test series against England last month. Now, while Philander sits on the sidelines, the rest of the Proteas squad return to the field next Thursday for the first test of the two-match series against Bangladesh. Then England took a 1-0 lead in their five-day match ODI series against West Indies yesterday after seeing out a seven-wicket victory in Manchester. Johnny Bairstow starred with the bat as he went on to score his maiden ODI century, which helped England chase down the 205 required for victory with just under 20 overs remaining. The second ODI takes place tomorrow at Nottingham from 1.30pm. 
And in soccer news, Orlando Pirates moved to the summit of the Premier Soccer League table last night after a 1-0 win over Cape Town City in Soweto. Pirates left it late as Tabor Galinga hit to the back of the net in the 82nd minute with sec, uh, with, uh, that uh, sent Pirates to the top with 11 points. That's three clear of the second place Golden Arrows. Now elsewhere in the PSL last night, Supersport and Chipper drew one all with Free State Stars edged Polokwane City by three goals to two. And Liverpool were knocked out of the English League Cup last night as they suffered a 2-0 loss to Leicester City. Now, despite Liverpool dominating the game with 21 shots at goal, the Foxes proved to be more clinical on the night with Islam Slimani and Shinji Okazaki getting in on the score sheet. In other results from last night, Tottenham beat Barnsley 1-0. Bristol put two past Stoke while Weston brushed aside Bolton 3-0. And that's where we leave your sport for now. We'll have uh, one more update for you in an hour's time from now. Right now, though, let's quickly take a look at your roads. Well, uh, we start off with your traffic in Gauteng and Pretoria. There's a bus strike affecting the Northwest Starline bus, reducing the availability of buses across the Tuane region this morning. So please make alternative arrangements. Then moving to the Western Cape in Belleville, on the N1 inbound, traffic is slow moving. That's between the R300 interchange and the Durban Road exit. That's where we leave your traffic for now on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Let's quickly take a look at your weather and those temperatures for your feel-good Wednesday. And it looks like warm temperatures can be expected for the northeastern parts of the country and cooler conditions along the coastlines with also a couple of showers expected for certain places today. We start with the day of Polokwane, we begin at 13, the steg to 26 graden maximum. Mombella, 15, 24, Pretoria, 14, 29. Johannesburg begin at 12, the steg to 28. Maikeng, 15, 30. Klerksdorp, 16, and the maximum of 32. Kimberley 16.33, Bloemfontein 11 en een maximum 30, Richards Bay 15.24, Pieter Marisburg begin op 12 graden minimum en een maximum van 23, Durban 17.22, Ntata 10.19 with a couple of showers expected. Also some showers for East London today, 15 minimum with a maximum of 19 degrees, Craddock 9.27, Port Elizabeth 15 and a maximum of 19, George 12.20, Sutherland 11.25, Cape Town 13.24, Worcester 12.26, Springbok starting off on 15 with a maximum of 32 and Uppington starting off on 20 minimum with a maximum of a very hot 35 degrees. That's a wrap of your weather for the 7 o'clock bulletin. One more update heading your way just after 8. Well, it's time for us to take a look at what's happening on social media. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom is what everybody's talking about. John McGrath says, time is not linear. It's relative. It's not the years in your life. It's the life in your years. Then I like this one. It's amazing how three minutes with the wrong person feels like an eternity, yet three hours with the right one feels like a moment. That's very cool. Uh, let's see. Dr. Nack says, uh, there's much more to learn in life, including in your own craft. Keep learning and never stop. And they say here, you can never know enough so keep learning and let's end off with this one um, but also from John McGrath says always be the thermostat never the thermometer I love that control your environment with your positivity if you need some positivity this morning go and look at Wednesday wisdom Hey, we're talking about trying to control your environment. A group of six scientists have just emerged from an experiment where they lived on a volcanic or on a volcano in Hawaii sure. for eight months in order to simulate the entire environment of living on Mars. How did they come out? Find out after the break. Yes, do stay tuned and find out. And then we're also going to take a look at the dangers of those get rich quick schemes. You do not want to miss out on that either. So we'll see you after the break. Dreaming of prizes, fame and fortune? It's now your chance of a lifetime to join your favourite celebrities in paradise and become famous like them on Tropica Island of Treasure Maldives. Plus, a chance to win a shared smooth 1 million rand. Buy Tropica, enter and come to the auditions on Saturday the 30th of September at Cavendish Square, Cape Town, 7th of October at Gateway, Durban or 14th of October at The Zone, Johannesburg. Grab a Tropica for details. There's nothing smoother.
This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. We're now turning our attention to a daily tech update. I love this because it is so scary how quickly life and technology in itself is advancing. It's scary. It is crazy. It's all of that wrapped into one. And I don't know, if, if I put myself in this situation, I don't know how I would react. But here's the story. So just a few decades ago, of course, we, went to, we uh, sent the first human into space. And now the race is on to get the first person to Mars. Now, just this week, a team of six scientists emerged from an eight-month-long Mars simulation below the summit of Mauna Lao, which is an active volcano in Hawaii. Eight months, they were confined in that little space. Look how pale they are. It's <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, there we go. Now, um, this may sound like some kind of a science fiction story, but um, since January, the team was actually completely isolated from society and had to survive or freeze dried food and vegetables that they grew inside this dome that was designed to recreate the environment and conditions of Mars. Okay. Now, the aim was to better understand the psychological components of a long-term space travel and exploration of Mars, and they wanted to find out how humans would cope emotionally and psychologically living in such a confined space for so long. And now, this is the part where I'm not too sure. I don't think I would manage to live in that confined little space for eight months, With, Zoe. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. That's, that's, that's a challenge in itself. But I mean, I think it's interesting that they're taking these steps and yeah. it's going to be great to see where, what they're going to do with the but research. But this is, this is just the thing. Now, the data produced from this experiment will help NASA or NASA select people with the, the right mix of traits to best cope with the stress, isolation and danger of a two to three year trip to Mars which they're planning to undertake in 2030. Of course, it's literally just around the corner. Now, the relieved and weary scientists were welcomed by the press and delicious buffet of tropical fruits. Oh, incredible. Go. I would have gone with a burger. Uh, anything, anything, <laughs> anything that's not frozen right or frozen, yeah. But that's crazy, man. So whenever they left, it was uh, space suits. They also had a 20-minute delay in any communication that they have, which is the time it takes to communicate between uh, Mars and here. So yeah, man, as real as it gets. That's absolutely interesting. Well, there you have it. That was our daily tech update for you on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Now, we often come across investment opportunities that promise higher returns in, short, in a short space of time. And although some may seem legitimate, there are those that, of course, are simply an easy way for criminals to con people out of parting with their hard-earned cash. Now, Kilani Pillay, the CEO of Sabric, the South African Banking Risk Information Center, is here to tell us about all of these get-rich-quick schemes. But, I mean, Kilani, can't they just be true already? Oh, I, I wish they were. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, in, in your, I guess, definition as an organization, what qualifies as a get-rich-quick scheme? Well, Kat, you know, these are illegal schemes that, well, uh, and they're certainly not investments at all, um, where the perpetrators, fraudsters, actually get together and devise these schemes mm -hmm. and they entice um, the man in the street, they entice you and I to invest in, in these particular schemes. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they offer all kinds of amazing returns, uh, there's always it, it, not just a possibility, according to them, but they guarantee you these great returns uh, for the monies that you need to invest with them. Yeah. So what are those particular signs then to look out for when you do get that email that says, earn the quickest $19,000 in the next four minutes, and it shows you these graphs and it's these videos in the background of people you know, saying, oh, this is how I changed my life. What are the, some of the things to look out for? Well, I think certainly one of the things or some of the things are they often will provide you with information that's very vague and scant. You know, there's not real, there's no real information on how the scheme actually works. Mm -hmm. It's always a, pro a guarantee that you will make money. And no uh, investment scheme, uh, a legitimate one, will guarantee you a return. There's, there's always, always a risk. risk. There's always yeah. risk. Uh, they would also encourage you to do this as quick as possible or you're going to lose the opportunity. Mm -hmm. They'll also tell you it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and they'll, you know, so all these things are to get you to be quite emotional and wanting to get into it as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the, I think the thing to look out for is nobody will guarantee you um, a return, mm -hmm. especially, in, you know, not, uh, and, and also another thing, very important, they'll always offer you double digit uh, uh, returns. Returns. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and that's just really not what happens. So what if you suspect that there might be some form of legitimacy to this investment or the possible investment? Are there any kind of safe measures you could take, websites you could visit, numbers you could check to track the investment scheme to ensure that it is indeed what it says it is? 
Well, one of the things that we would advise people to do is try and, if you're going to be investing, especially, a, you know, a, those that are investing lump sum, but anybody for that matter, mm -hmm. you should go to an independent advisor. You know, somebody not associated with this particular scheme, mm -hmm. just to get some advice in terms of whether it's legitimate, whether it's safe, whether, you know, it, it, it's not a, a high risk mm -hmm. uh, investment. Also contact the Financial Services Board uh -huh. and find out whether this is a registered scheme, whether this is a registered advisor. You know, these are all things that will give you the, a, a sense of comfort as to whether you're going into something legitimate. And also, you know, they, they often, uh, most often, will offer you products that are not actually uh, managed by uh, authentic um, investment companies, mm -hmm. you know. So I think these are all the things when it's suddenly names that you've never heard of before, nobody's heard of them, the FSB doesn't know anything about them, then just stay away and yeah. don't put your monies in there. Ooh, but $19,000 in four minutes sounds so good. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Kilani, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really do appreciate it. And I think uh, it's true, we all want to be millionaires, but be careful of those investments that guarantee you high profits with little to no financial risk. And for more tips on banking safely, visit Sabric, the website, and of course their Facebook and Twitter pages so that you can hashtag wise up and watch out. Wise up, watch out. Well, it is Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's time for a little bit of gaming. Well, Vodacom is offering customers a chance to explore more of the internet with up to one gig of free data every day, allowing South Africans to experience the internet. Well, today is Gaming Wednesday, and you can get free access for the day to Game Mine, ViewClip, and Vodacom games without any data charges. Yes! Now, this morning, we are taking a look at Metal Soldiers, a platform-style game with all of the action we've come to expect from arcade shooters. Zoe's already had a practice run, so Zoe, give us a rundown of uh, you playing Metal Soldiers. I feel like I've had like a 20 minute practice <laughs> run. Okay, so as you can see at the top of the screen, there's a clock. 25 seconds. That's yes. going to start moving the minute I make this little man move. So okay. I have the so option to make jump him go forward and, and back. Shoot. He can shoot, he can jump. And, you need and to the minute I move, the clock moves. And the idea is not to die. So yes. you jump over the <laughs> things, you shoot people. Oh, wow. Oh and you shoot and you then I die. You want to go again? <laughs> yes. Okay, let's do this again. Because that was so short. I feel like we need another look. <laughs> Okay, See, cool. So there you're running, you're Ooh, jumping. Oh, again, <laughs> again, just death. <laughs> All right, let me let me see quickly. Do you want to give it a go? All right, okay. Let's, woo, hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So here, this is us okay, jumping. So the clock starts ticking. There cool, we go. And collect. And you can double well. jump. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, Why I've do you have it. so many bullets? Because I collect stuff. So yeah. <laughs> But you have to get the cut. <laughs> so cool. I'm gonna easy. go again. I'm gonna go again one go last again. time. This one. game is actually a lot of fun. It's addictive. And I'm sure if you don't die, it's Shoot gonna him. be even more. I'm waiting. Ah, I kill you. All right, there we go. Get jump, the clock. Jump, jump. There we get go. The get clock. the clock. Shoot, Shoot that thingy. this guy. There and we go. then jump again. And so then cool. push that off. And then jump some more. There's coins. Get some coins. Some okay. Monty, lovely. Get the clock. Oh, one point. Get some, uh, and wait for this guy. I feel like, Ta -da, oh, shoot him. Kill you. I feel like there so much easier go. to commentate when you're not playing. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna go get back and get, get the, the clock. clock. Okay, jump. There we go. There okay, we go. my guy doesn't I love how you jump me. with the phone. And jump and shoot. Ha! Oh, well done! Yes. Well done! <laughs> 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 Anyways, it's it a lot of fun. I love this game. Anyway, well, to make your day, simply keep a positive data balance on your Vodacom SIM card. Then dial star triple one star six four six three four hash or download the latest version of my Vodacom app and claim your free data daily. For more T's and C's, you can go to vodacom.co.za. It's so much fun. I died. Uh, you guys need a bit more practice. Keep practicing, Zoe. Keep practicing. The nation is still watching you. Anyway, listen, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we speak to Phil Year, Maritz, actor and presenter about his debut on and then we're also going to get into the kitchen to make a delicious panna cotta and banana milkshake. All that deliciousness and more on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Turkish Airlines voted Europe's best airline for six consecutive years. Widens your world with outstanding hospitality as you journey in style to your destination. Enjoy a stopover in Istanbul and discover the colors of this fascinating city. With Turkish Airlines, your stopover will include complimentary accommodation in Istanbul and you can experience the wonder of two continents combined in an unforgettable adventure. To learn more about the best stopover in travel, visit turkishairlines.com.
Is nine clear? One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Here we go. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel-good breakfast show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. Now, from your TV screens to the silver screen, any actor would tell you that the two cannot really be compared. And one such actor who successfully and comfortably bridged the gap is actor and newest pastella presenter for Year Moritz. Can we give him an Expresso Yay! welcome? Oh, my goodness. How are you? Welcome to our show. So Thank good to you. have you. Yeah, it's fantastic to be back. Well, let me tell you something. I, I, I know a lot of actors dream of life on stage, uh, but what does it feel like to have bridged that gap and now to be a TV presenter on screen? It is fantastic. I, I must say, I started off on a small platform with Navik, which yeah. we did as well for SABC, and now to, to be on Pasella is, it's, it's like... It's like almost like top billing, yes. But for Afrikaans, you know. So, <laughs> so from Narvik, which was quite smaller to to Pasala, which yeah. is, is really nice. And I must say, the nice thing is is meeting the new faces and interesting people. I mean, that's yeah. what it's all about. So it's really it's an fantastic. exciting time for Pasala. I absolutely love it. But did you ever see your life going in this direction? Never. I must say, never. I thought I would always be on on stage with theatre, and then yeah. I started doing film and series and all that. And um, I had a taste with Naviak, and um, when this happened, I was like, I couldn't believe it, but I never saw myself going in this direction. Yeah, well, it's, fa it's fascinating because I know that you've done various things. I mean, you have, have been cast in various soap operas, mm -hmm. and there's always a fear that you could be typecast in a role. Was that something that you were ever worried about? I was worried about it, but I must say I've been lucky with roles uh, where it's always been different. So I've yeah. had the like the romantic leads, and then I've had the like bad guys. So I've, I've been lucky, if I can touch wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch wood, you know, but yeah, I've been, I've been lucky with, with the roles that I've gotten. And just out of interest, like, what's been the most fun to play, the romantic leads or the bad guys? Of course, the romantic oh, leads. Oh, really? <laughs> I was going to think you said the, the bad no, guys. The bad guys, I, f I find more easy. Yeah. You know, it, it's very easy to portray the bad guys, where the romantic leads, it's, it, it, you challenge yourself with other stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to be angry. Okay. All right. I see you. <laughs> but it's not easy to pop that tear that just runs down your cheek at the right moment. Depends. I mean, depends which actors you ask. Okay. All right. So that, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the reason why you're here this morning. You've recently been uh, welcomed into the Pastella family. Yeah. Why did you decide to go into this direction with your life? I must say, I don't think I decided. It, it, it just it came across my path and I decided happened, to take yeah. on the challenge. And the reason why is I feel I'm a, a people's person. And, and this is the thing about this work is that you meet different people, like you guys, you meet yeah. different people every day and, it's, and they do something awesome. That's why we interview them. Exactly. Um, so it's just fantastic to see what these people are doing and what they've achieved, achieved in their lives. Yeah. And, and it inspires, I think, me and the people watching to do more. Exactly. If I can put it that way. Talking about doing more, what are you looking forward to the most? If you could, if you could have one thing that you would really love to do within your Pasala journey, what would it be? <laughs> Um, skydiving. I'm joking. Oh, I'm sure they're going <laughs> to make that happen. I think it would be nice to, to do a bit more people doing ch charity work, to see yeah. what people are doing for the community and the world out there, and, and doing good, if I can put it 
in short, you're yeah. doing good. Well, well, I good. love that. I yeah. love that you're on Pasella. You're certainly very uh, easy on the eyes. So that's nice. We certainly <laughs> love watching you on TV. And uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. And of course, just taking us through this journey. Thank you so much. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean... Well, stay tuned. We will be chatting to Phil a bit later on about his time being part of the latest season of Pasella and uh, what we have to look forward to on that journey. Yo, there's things happening in this kitchen, mouth-watering things, I tell you. Lizette Hartley joining us on your Wednesday morning. And we are making a panna cotta. Now, panna cotta is one of those foolproof desserts that you want to enjoy. Maybe a nice and hot summer's day. But we're giving it a bit of a boost using our Clover Super M's this morning. We're making a beautiful banana-flavored panna cotta. It's perfect if you really want to just hashtag chill. Yes. Okay. Lekker, Lizette. How are you? Very good, yeah. Very, very good. Thank you for all with all the lekker clear for the nagerechten that we here Um so right, panna cotta, easy, yes? Unbelievably easy. People okay. are scared of it because you're working with gelatin, but it is so easy, especially if you well, work I'm with this I'm scared of it puppy. because if you say panna cotta, panna cotta <laughs> it yes, sounds yeah. like this is not something panna that I'm going to try. Panna cotta, like you're Panna Italian. cotta, all right. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> now even more reason not to try it, but it's really, really easy. Okay. No, unbelievably easy. So the big secret is the gelatin, okay? okay? And um, I love working with these puppies, the little leaf gelatin. Yes, it's and, so and, easy. and that's like... It looks like glass. It's amazing. But okay. it's not, fortunately. <laughs> it looks like glass, but it's not. Okay. okay. So all it is, is some fantastic cream. Okay, you some need the fresh cream. cream, yeah? Some fresh cream. Right. You need the cream because um, you want that richness. You yes. can't just make it with milk. No. I think it would be a bit boring then. Okay. Okay, so you just heat your cream yep. with a little bit of caster sugar. Okay. Or normal sugar, but caster sugar dissolves more easily. Right. Then these puppies, Gelatin sheets. Like four, four leaves go in some water for about 10 minutes and then they turn into... Do you have to put it in water? Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They turn into gloopy jellyfish. Uh -huh. Aha. So there you have it. They're still kind of solid-ish. Solid-ish, But they're going to yes. dissolve the Very. minute it heats up. Yes. So then it goes into heat. Heat right. is what dissolves it. Okay. And I mean, it, it's like 20 seconds. If, yeah. If, if 20 seconds. Okay. That's it. Okay. Done. No. Right. So that's the, the, the panna cotta kind of... That's your panna cotta base. Base. That's what we do. Okay. Now... Then in goes... Our Super M. Yeah. And of course the Super M, we love it. If you want to just like take banana. a moment out of the day, just <laughs> chill. Perfect to sit and relax. I'm a big fan. Okay. Okay. That's it. Made. Is that it? That's it, mate. Now, you can let this cool down a bit to room temperature. Okay. And then you put it in a beautiful glass. You can put these in panna cotta molds and then demold right. them. But if you're a little bit skittish, just oh. put it in a glass. Or if you don't have a fancy glass or, if you or don't anything, have just a fancy put it in a bowl. <laughs> put it in a bowl you, you, and put it in the okay. fridge. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't really do that. <laughs> We've got to go for elegant, a little this bit is, elegant. It's panna cotta after all. <laughs> and then this, once it's reached room temperature, just pop it in the fridge okay. for one, two hours until it's set. And then that's what you get. And there we have it. Of course, and you can make it any other different flavor. You've got the strawberry, yes. the cream soda, the chocolate, and the banana. And look at you just and garnish, the banana. Yes, garnish it yeah. with something that's already in there. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh man, that looks so much fun. Actually, especially for the summer months. SMS the keyword uh, Clover to 33728. That's Clover to 33728. We'll send you everything in return to make this very, very easy decadent dessert. Is it bye bye, donkey? But yes, hear those steps one more time. have it that keyword one more time is clover sms that to 33728 go check it out it's on our website a little bit later on as well that's expressoshow.com for a delicious panna cotta of your flavor lizette videos bye bye donkey so the samaklux is the gelatin room um your super m and that goes into the fridge that's it and then you decorate it it's as easy as that and you have a deck and a dessert right there clover to 33728 made with love by clover 
Well, you might be wondering who I'm holding right now. Well, the mission is to rescue. The dream is that one day it won't be necessary with the selfless work of NPOs like Sidewalk Specials. Beautiful animals like this little five-year-old Schmiegel. She's a little Dutch hound who was found, who needs to find their forever homes. Now we have founder and director of Sidewalk Specials, Rachel Sylvester, who has more information on this very deserving Dutch hound who deserves her forever home, who was rescued only two days ago go in Oatswaring and it's looking for her forever home. Rachel, yes. I feel Hi. like I'm fighting back tears. Tell me a little <laughs> bit more about little Schmiegel that I'm holding here. Uh, Schmiegel came in, we do, with a pound up there. We have an agreement that if they have any dogs they can't care for, we will take them. So mm -hmm. she came in with five of the dogs. Um, we called it Mange Monday because okay. everyone had mange. Mm. Um, she was found on a rubbish dump. Okay. Um, she has a thyroid deficiency. I was going to ask what is her story because yeah. it, it really Init is initially you'd assume mange like we did but it's actually a thyroid deficiency which means her hair falls out she can't regulate her temperature um, so she's already on medication okay. so in about two months her hair should start coming back through she's the same color as me so hopefully <laughs> she'll be a little redhead. Aww. Um, she's a little bit nervous but her tail wags when she's eating she's already told my pit bull off I, I turned around and my pit bull sat there waiting well, this one ate her food. So I was like, okay, so there's some fight left in her. So she's a little sassy. So she's sassy. going forward, what is the treatment plan for her um, thyroid? She has medication twice a day, and okay. that will be for the rest of her life. It's not expensive medication, but it is continuous. Okay. Cyborg specials, we take care of them until financially and vet-wise until they're as healthy as they can be. Okay. And then the adoptive family will take over from there. Um, and yeah, it's just a bit of time, a bit of TLC. She needs to have dips once in a while, okay. which she hates. She's um, shaking, but that's not from getting cold or you say it's I just like some stage jitters. fright. Some yeah. stage fright. She's, she's all like bouncy <laughs> and tail wagging, and then you put her in a car and she's like, What I is this? And she's like, Come through the backy, through the backy, over onto your knee, and you're trying to drive around her. Um, <laughs> I yeah. think for a lot of animals, being in the car is never fun. But what kind never. of family should consider? taking in Schmiegel? I think somebody that can really just wants a lap dog, okay? She comes, she comes nicely to coffee with you. She fits on your arm so sweetly. She gets on with all dogs, all cats, all kids. So just someone's going to give her a bit of TLC because she's obviously not had the easiest life. No, I can imagine. I mean, it's also a very good conversation starter. You're walking around with her. People are like, oh, lady, your dog's sick. You're like, thank you, Sherlock. She is. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for pointing out the obvious. Yeah, you're like, really? No. Well, um. For someone that wants to, you know, take take little Schmiegel mm. to their forever home or even any of the other animals that you guys have, yes. where can they get in ho a hold of you? A great thing to get us is on Facebook, you can get us on Instagram, you can get us on our website, starworkspecials.org, or you can give us a phone call. And if you do, even if you tell us what you are looking for, like we have a lot of connections and we can normally source, even if you're breed interested, like you want Dachshunds, you it's just everything but French Bulldogs. Okay. <laughs> and then in terms of locations throughout South Africa, um, where are you guys mainly based? We're mainly central Cape Town in foster homes. Okay. Um, but like she came down from the garden route. We do also, we rehome in Johannesburg. So we will be as flexible as we can be if the home's right for the dog. Okay. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for thank coming you. through, sharing little Schmiegel's story here. And remember, if you want to give Schmiegel her forever home or any of the other uh, animals at uh, uh, Sidewalk Specials, do check them out. All those details are on your screen. All right, how about you? Stay tuned and keep it locked to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. When we come back, we take a look at the top 40 tracks globally with 5FM and Nick Hammond. Exactly, and then I'm excited for our fashion how-to guide after the break because this morning we are channeling our curves. Hey. All that and more coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And you know, you need to wear the guy, you pop yeah. up. Make their wildest dreams come true. Get your free Dreammaker pillow when you buy two bags of Hills Pets food.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Espresso. And earlier we had our local entertainment news, but let's find out what our international stars have been up to. Well, in Hollywood, it's not surprising that your ex and your next might end up together. For example, remember <laughs> wow. how Kourtney Kardashian was rumored to be dating Justin Bieber. There's a lot of speculation because we don't know what happened between the two of them. Well, their exes, Scott Disick and Sophia Ritchie, are the ones sparking the rumors this time uh, because of these photos of the two Is of them Sophia spending Yay. time together. I it was Selena. Yes. And Sophia looked so no. smitten with Scott whilst they were out and about having lunch. Um, and I don't know if these pictures are anything to go by, but so. Sophia, you guys, is only 19 years old. Ah, la, la. I love how you say this only happens in Hollywood. It happens old. in high school, it happens at varsity. How old Scott? <laughs> I think he's like mid 30s, like 34, 30s. 34, 35. 19, yeah. mid 30s, okay. It's a huge gap. It's a massive Good gap. Grace. So, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's a friendship, but it certainly doesn't look like it. Yeah, let's account on it on that. Um, it's someone a else. title, isn't it? The Lord. Yeah. The Lord, Lord, yeah, Lord It does things to people. Oh, Lord. I know. Oh, Lord. I know. Well, you guys, somebody that's not having a great day or a great week is Kevin Hart. Um, he may be a funny man, but this is something not lot worth laughing about. In case you missed it, Kevin took to Instagram uh, about five days ago to apologize for, quote, an error in judgment. Now, that error in judgment is rumored to be a video which shows Kevin engaging in sexual activities with a woman who is not his very pregnant wife, Eniko. The latest development on this story, however, is that the woman in the video has been identified and confirmed as Montia Sabah, a traveling stripper who has openly said that the purpose for the video is to get money from Kevin. Now, while an FBI investigation has been opened, all we can say is that this is definitely going to be a very difficult time for the new parents to be. Absolutely. Wow. Eh? Wow, Ooh. and it's it's super super sad. Yeah, I, I went um, onto Nico Hart's page to mm, see mm. if she's posted anything because, of course, Kevin posted the video where mm. he apologizes, but she hasn't posted anything yet. So I think it's it's probably a very difficult time. Yeah, you can imagine it's like her whole world just crumbling in yeah. right now. So oh, wishing so her the best, especially at the, before the, the birth of the child as well. All right. Sure. So that's what the de, the entertainment scene is delivering today. Wow. Uh, but right now it is time to take a look at some of the biggest songs that are charting uh, on the 5FM Top 40 chart. And this week Shekinah and Good Luck are the top performing South African artists. But uh, of course who will end up at the top as we feature a new number one single? Let's take a look. Here's Nick Hammond. Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick Hammond. I'm still on the Hammond Time Heritage Tour. Last week when we left off, I was in Durban. From there, I've done the Eastern Cape, I've done the Free State. I'm currently right now in the Northern Cape. It's the second last province of the journey. And as of tomorrow morning, I'm going to be live from the Western Cape. All of the sights, all of the sounds, all of the history and heritage that we've seen over the past couple of days has been absolutely incredible. And it's been so amazing to share this journey with you as well. So thank you so much to everybody who's been listening Monday to Friday, 9 to 12. And of course, to all of you who've been following the feeds on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Remember, if you want to see anything that we're doing, just go and use the hashtag Hammond Tour, H-A-M-M-A-N-T-O-U-R. Or of course, what you can also do is you can follow the SABC's Love South Africa campaign and hashtag Love SA. All right, it's time to take a look at the brand new entries onto the charts like we would every week, beginning at number 35. It's new from Goldfish called If I Could Buy. Second new entry pick I went with this week is said to be one of the hottest tunes this summer. It's coming in from Timo ODV at number 26. Look out for this one. It's all new. Time to check out my move and shaker picks for the week. And it is also going to be a new entry for my first selection from Taylor Swift, who's blowing up the charts all around the world and here in South Africa as well. This is at number 17 as a new entry onto the charts, which made me make it a pick for my movers and shakers this week, because I think it could go all the way to number one. It's called Ready For It. Are you ready for it? My second mover shaking pick went from 21 to 12 in just one week. It's one of the biggest songs in the planet, J Balvin and Willie Williams with me. Estamos rompiendo la discoteca, la fiesta no para pena comienza. Time now to check out the top 10 biggest songs in music from this past week in the 5FM Top 40. Beginning at number 10, jumping from 16 the week before, it's Good Luck and DJ Gagnani with me. Dropping down to number nine this week seems to just be getting lower and lower. The seven the week before, and a former number one, Louis Fonsi, Daddy Yankee, and Justin Bieber. Despacito. Despacito. Quiero besos despacito. At 
number eight this week, it's Sam Thing Soweto with Akanamari. Going from number 14 to number seven, it's Justin Bieber and Blood Park with Friends. Can we still be friends? Can we Dropping down this week to number seven, it's DJ Khaled, Bryson Tiller and Rihanna. It's a former number one called Wild sure Thoughts. Staying relatively steady for two weeks in a row, dropping down just one position from six the week before to number five, French Montana and Sway Lee with Unforgettable. This has moved two positions. It was at number two last week. We thought it was going to get number one, but hey, it's dropped down to number four. It's Calvin Harris, Katy Perry, Big Sean, and Pharrell Williams with Felix. This week at number three also happens to be the highest local entry on the 5FM Top 40, Shekinah with Sue. Number two this week, it's dropped down from its number one spot the week before it's been knocked off the pole position. I'm talking of a track called What About Us. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to follow my journey on the Hammond Time Heritage Tour using the hashtag Hammond Tour. And of course, listen to Hammond Time every Monday to Friday, 9 to 12. And of course, also on the 5FM Top 40, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday to find out who's going to take the number one spot on the 5FM Top 40. Speaking of which, this past weekend, Pink was knocked off by Taylor Swift. It's at number one. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Look what you just made me do. Look what you just made me do. I've been looking forward to so much this morning. It's time for our fashion how-to guide. And this morning, we're talking curves. Well, it's so good to finally be doing this this morning. Of course, we, we know that fashion has the ability to transform and to empower an individual regardless of your body shape. Now, whether you're skinny, or whether you're curvy, or whether you're somewhere in between, when you put on the right uh, outfit, it really can take you to a whole nother level. Now, this morning, we are offering you a masterclass. And to, hear, to help us do that, we've got fashion designers Bridget Pickering in the house, as well as Ludwig Bausch. And we're going to be talking about how to dress those amazing curves it's so good to have you so in studio this morning so the last time i saw you it was joburg fashion week and um it was something that i'd never seen before rough tongue had the most amazing gorgeous curvy models on the stage and they took that show to a whole nother level but when it comes to dressing for the body type i know that you are not just about one body type you really cater to a spectrum of body types what are the most important things you need to remember you know, I think we've had this question a lot about like what inspired us to increase our size yes. curve and include, be inclusive to include a whole lot of demographic of body type Which we love. that we've never done before. And honestly, it's the women that we dress. We are 100% motivated by those women yeah. and 80% of those women are a size large and upwards. Yeah. So we've sort of grown organically, we've got, always gone up to 40 and then we've just kept on going. As the demand has come, we have supplied and I think you know, there's so many different body types, so you can't design for everyone. But at the end of the day, you, we have looked at what we've got and gone, right, this really works for that shape. So show off the curves, give them, give them an hourglass figure, make sure that we flatter absolutely every part of what they have and be it revealing shoulders, good parts of your, thigh, your legs. Yeah. You know, there's so many parts that this, the waistline enhance, show off the curves, and bring it. I love like it. We're all, all about that. I love it. Talking about bringing it, mm. you brought some models today that are going to yeah. show off some of the signature looks or pieces that you've identified that we should be incorporating into our wardrobes if we are a curvier woman. So let's bring our first, oh, I love the cinched in the waist the there. Talk us through this one. Um, so what we've got here is a, is a high-waisted pencil skirt <clears throat> in a satin twill, wow. and it's printed with, with orchid prints. And then she's wearing a, she's wearing a one shoulder, and then on the sleeve, an enhanced puff, um, just to create a bit of a, a bit, bit of volume of on that shoulder. Absolutely beautiful. And, there, and there's always a myth that, oh, you know, you can't expose your arms if you're yeah. a curvier girl. Yeah. You might not like your arms. And we're going, no, get out that arm because your shoulder to neck 
is such a beautiful part of a woman's body. Exactly. Yeah. So let's show it off. So let's, not hide, let's not hide those pieces. <gasps> Ooh, tell me more. Tell me more. This is so this gorgeous. Is, this is a twist. This is called our twist dress um, maxi. Yes. And what you've got here, especially for the curvier girls, you can see the twist un just under the bust. Yeah. That pulls in just, that's the smallest part of, of most women's yeah. bodies. It's, yeah. so it's just sexy, under the though. bust. Yeah. So we've got a twist pulled in and then the, the gathers create almost like hiding over the tummies, hiding all of that. And then the plunging V and then the beautiful long sleeve. Gorgeous, oh, here we go, look at this and one. Exactly, oh. and there we've got your quintessential wrap dress. Yeah. The wrap dress on any curved body, whether it's long or short, is incredible. Beautiful V line, and also this is adjustable. So depending on how large or how, not, how, how small you are yeah. up top, you can cinch yes. that into the waist. Love it. And then the kimono sleeve, rough tongue, we're obsessed with all things kimono. Yeah. And those are gorgeous. cut perfectly, so it balances her shape. So the sleeve, the hip, the cinched in waist, and then the beautiful curved hemline shows off her legs perfectly. It's wonderful. And then finally, I think we have time for just maybe one do or don't when it comes to dressing for your curves. <gasps> Right. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the do. <laughs> do, 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 do. do you show off your curves? Yes. Do it. Yes. Show off the curves. And and make you know, you can wear prints, like all those statement florals we use as curve camouflage. So wear the prints. You can wear the stripes. Don't the listen color. to all the old school, oh, oh you can't do this, you can't do that. We've broken we've broken the mold. Love do it. it. Absolutely. If you love it, do it. If you love it, and do it. Don't, 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 don't ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Hide your body. Oh, that I love it. it. I it. Love All it. of these pieces go. are highlighting what you should and what you should show off. So don't hide them. Don't go and buy a tent dress. And the biggest no don't layering. is don't think that volume will hide your shape because everyone, you just look bigger. Yeah. That's all it yeah. is. I love it. Well, there you go. Bridget and Ludwig said it. Do not hide your shape. Show, show off that curves. body. Show off those curves from Rough Tongue looking absolutely amazing. Go out there, ladies, and make sure you celebrate those curves. <laughs> Well, from showing off the beautiful curves to showing off the beautiful voice, we have Amanda Tiffin in studio with us here to perform for us ahead of, you know, this uh, this weekend, well, not this weekend, end of the month's um, Jazz Masters uh, tribute. Exactly. It's going to be amazing. And she sounds phenomenal at that as well. We can't wait. And then also jumping into the kitchen with Anel and Lizette as they crack the cooking code. It's the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. <laughs> Play your C for me. Might be transposed. Oh my god. Okay. So I just played on settings. Settings. Who transposed this the keyboard and leaves it there? That is just so naughty. That's if you just switch it off and switch it back on, it should go back to zero. Eh? Will it? <laughs> transpose. <gasps> this down a half step. Oh my god. Okay, there we so go. So I sang my song down a half step. I love that. Try the C. Oh.
you come to know your song I'll show you a way It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso, on SABC3. Now, if your heart beats to the rhythms and sings to the melodies of jazz music, then you'll need to get your tickets to go and see the Jazz Masters tribute that is on show at the Artscape Theatre Centre from the 28th until the 30th of September, where you'll see the likes of Amanda Tiffin, who will be there celebrating some of our greatest jazz musicians. And here she is right now, performing Ndate Kaifa Semenya and Me Letambulu's There's Music in the Air. Take you there 
find a tiffin on your feel-good breakfast show. Man, what a sweet way to start off a morning. Lovely stuff. So just paint a, a beautiful picture for me of, of what I can expect when I come to see the Jazz Masters tribute at the Artscape. So the Jazz Masters tribute is a concert series. Mm -hmm. So you have to treat yourself to three nights in a row of oh. the best jazz that uh, South Africa has to offer. The first night uh, will be myself with Zoe Modicha and oh, yes. Nomfundo Kaluva. So the ladies are taking to the stage with these fine gentlemen and some other great jazz musicians. And we're paying tribute mostly to the women of jazz, mm -hmm. Gila Kumalo, um, and uh, Leta Mbulu, Busim Hlongo, Menim Makeba, of course. So, and, and we'll also be showcasing the songs of the, um, the artists themselves. Excellent. And then the next night, I think we have Mkoi Mrabat is featuring. And the following night, Alvin Dyers and Hilton Schilder are featuring. Hmm. And the whole festival we're doing in tribute to the late, great Errol Dyers. Oh, fantastic stuff. And thank you for sharing that beautiful music with us. The event details are on your screen right now. Make sure that you get your tickets. And in the meantime, also link up with us on our social media platforms and let us know what you thought about that beautiful performance of There is music in the end. Internationalist, the South African Maatschappelijke Sekerheidsagentschap gaan na verwachting a contract met the postkantoor sluit for the betaling van maatschappelijke toelaas. Die stap volg nadat die aanvankelijke spertheid for the financial analysering van een ooreenkomst twee keer verskyf is. Die voorzitter van die parlement, sy staande komitee in sake openbare rekeninge, Temba Godi, sê die postkantoor het sy komitee die versekering gegee dat indien een contract van deze maand met Sasse gesluit word, hy in staat sal wees om die spertheid van maart aanstaande jaar te haal. Die vakbond Solidariteit se appel by die Suid-Afrikaanse Mensenrechte Commissie oor die Suid-Afrikaanse Lugdiens se uitsluiting van blanke mans in sy kadet program het geslaag keer. Solidariteit het aangevoer dat die SAL se kadet program nie buigsaam was nie en een rigide quota stelsel verteenwoordig het. Die SAHRC het nou bevind dat rechtstellende optrede eerder samenhorigheid moet bevorder as om verdeeldheid te verdiep. Op de internationale front president Donald Trump van de VSA het lidstaten van de Verenigde Naties aangemoedig om die druk op Noord-Korea te verhevig om sy kernwapens te laat vaar. Hy het in sy nevelingstoespraak in die groene marmersaal van de VN se algemene vergadering in New York gesê, Noord-Korea is die belangrijkste globale uitdaging. Trump het kort na sy aankomst by die VN hoofkwartier aan die woord gekom en gesê die wereld staar vernietigende eise van skirkstate, terroriste en extremiste in die gezicht. En dan ten slotte, Qatar en Kuwait gaan nie meer die visums van werkers uit Noord-Korea hernie nie. Dit sal een groot verlies aan buitenlandse inkomste vir Pyongyang meebring. Die besluit volg op vroere sanksies tegen Noord-Korea, wat onder meer een verswakking van bande met die land en die uitskop van sy ambassadeer uit Kuwait ingesluit het. Duisende Noord-Koreaanse werkers woon in die VSA geallieer de golfstreek en werk hoofdzakelijk op uh, constructie as of liever as constructiewerkers. Well, that was your 8 o'clock news update. Here's a final look at what's happening in the world of sport with you. Thank you so much, Leanne. Let's quickly take a last look at your sport headlines on your Wednesday morning. So good morning once again to our sports fans. Starting off with cricket news, pace bowler Vernon Philander has been uh, ruled out of the Proteus up upcoming first test against Bangladesh. Now, Philander is still recovering from a lower back injury that he picked up while fielding during South Africa's four-match test series against England last month. Now, while Philander sits on the sidelines, the rest of the Proteus squad return to the field next Thursday for the first test of their two-match series against Bangladesh. And then sticking with cricket news, England took a 1-0 lead in their five-match ODI series against uh, West Indies yesterday after seeing out a seven-wicket victory in Manchester. Now, Johnny Bairstow start with the bat as he went on to, to uh, score his maiden ODI century, which to help England chase down the 205 required for victory with just under 20 overs remaining. The second ODI takes place tomorrow in Nottingham from 1.30 p.m. In soccer news this morning, Orlando Pirates moved to the summit of the Premier Soccer League table last night after a 1-0 win over Cape Town City in Soweto. Pirates left it late as Tabor Kralinga hit the back of the net in the 82nd minute to send Pirates to the top of the log with 11 points. That's three clear of second place Golden Arrows. 
And elsewhere in the PSL last night, Supersport and Chipper drew one all with uh, while the Free State stars edged Polokwane City by three, to, uh, three goals to two. And then lastly, Liverpool were knocked out of the English League Cup last night as they suffered a 2-0 loss to Leicester City. Now, despite Liverpool dominating the game with 21 shots at goal, the Foxes proved to be more clinical on the night with Islam Slimani and Shinji Okazaki getting in uh, on the score sheet. In other results from last night, Tottenham beat Barnsley 1-0. Bristol put two past Stoke, while Weston brushed aside Bolton 3-0. And that's where we leave your sport on your Wednesday morning. Take a final look at your roads, starting off in Gauteng and Germiston. Now, there's been an accident on the N3 highway and the M uh, that's at the M2 interchange, and it's causing some congestion approaching the scene. Then, moving to Bayer Park on the N12 highway, there's also been an accident. This is causing delays between Snake Road and Atlas Road, and in the Western Cape in Weinberg, traffic is slow moving. That's on the M3 highway between Weinberg Park and Rhodes Avenue exit. That's where we leave your traffic on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Thank you so much, Zoe. Let's quickly take a last look at your weather and those temperatures. And it seems that the northeastern parts of the country can expect nice and warm temperatures and a beautiful day for Cape Town as well. Cooler temperatures are expected, though, along the coastal regions with a couple of showers expected in certain areas. We start to be a fun day. The Polokwane begins at 13, the steeg is 26. Mombela 15, and the matige 24. Pretoria 14, 29. Johannesburg 12, and the maximum 28. Mai Keng 15, 30. Klerksdorp 16 en een warmer 32, Kimberley 16, 33, Bloemfontein begin op 11 graden minimum en een maximum van 30, Richards Bay 15, 24, Peter Marysburg starting off on 12 minimum with a maximum 23, Durban 17, 22, Mtata 10 and 19 with some showers expected, East London can also expect a couple of showers starting off on 15 with a maximum of 19 degrees. Craddock 9 this morning with a maximum 27, Port Elizabeth 15 and 19, and George 12, 20, Sutherland good morning 11 degrees minimum with a maximum 25, Cape Town 13 and a mile 24, Worcester 12, 26, Springbok starting off on 15 reaching a high of 32 degrees and Uppington on 20 minimum and very very hot later on today 35 maximum. And that's a wrap of your weather here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show for your Wednesday morning. So it's also Gaming Wednesday with the Vodacom Make Your Day campaign and you can get free data to play your favorite games online. And you also stand a chance to win by visiting the Vodacom Facebook page and taking on their Gaming Wednesday High Score Challenge. So just to remind you, to make your day, simply keep a positive data balance on your Vodacom SIM card. Then dial star, triple one star, 634 hash or download the latest version of the My Vodacom app. And remember to opt in daily so you don't miss out on up to one gigabyte of free data every day. For more info and T's and C's, visit, visit Vodacom.coza. Oh, well, listen, we're taking a quick break on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We continue the travel adventures, my explorations of Turkey. And today we bring you Bodrum, the town of Bodrum. You do not want to miss out on Lovely. that. Lovely. Yes. And we've got steak in the kitchen. Yes. Together with Anel and Lizette, of course, yes. yes. they're answering your culinary questions 021430 Why? Because it is the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. Welcome to Tropica Island of Treasure Maldives. Now is your chance of a lifetime to join your favorite celebrities in paradise and have the chance to become famous like them. Plus the chance to win your share of a smooth 1 million rand. Are you ready to come party with us in the Maldives? The more Tropica you buy, the more chances you have to win prizes, fame and fortune. Grab a Tropica for details. Hope to see you in paradise. Tropica, nothing smooth.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Call us on your cell phone. Call in very hot line bling. That can only mean one thing. It can only thing. mean one thing when we welcome you back to the show with that song. It's the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. You can give us a call on 021-430-9881 and ask your questions. Our team of experts are here to answer them for you. Lizette Hartley and of course, and our portrait. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Very well, and you? Good to see you. Doing very, very well. It's been a, it's been a fast-moving week. It feels like Monday to Wednesday was just like one day. Who can wrap all the furniture? Everything. Summer is here. Everyone wants to get into the summer mood. Everyone wants to get drying and enjoying themselves. I guess why that's we got we got uh, this question here from Jonathan Van Toner, uh, who said the following: "said uh, How do you know when a steak mm. is is rare uh, when you've bried it, and how long are you supposed to rest it before you cut it?" So let's take on the first part. How do you know Super when it's rare? Super easy. I call it the touch test. The touch test. Yes. So if you touch a piece of raw meat you look at it it's incredibly soft yes okay so the more you cook it the firmer it's going to become mm -hmm. and it's absolutely foolproof if you don't know the trick you should know okay so you go like that and then you press there yeah. that is a rare state does it does it matter whether it's your left or your right no mm. okay so you can go in the left <laughs> yes, so, so that, that is a if it feels like rare. that it's rare rare okay, okay. are you, are you finger? pinching are you pinching or no, just you don't rare? pinch you touch just touch. touch okay that's a rare that's rare. now move your finger and you'll see how much that middle finger up. gives me medium rare. medium middle medium medium and then well done which you shouldn't do to a steak ever. so if, if, it, if it feels like pinky thumb touch it's too much it's way too much <laughs> Yeah, my dad used to eat it that way, but I don't yeah. recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a simple touch test, and that's how you know. Yeah. And then, how long do you rest it then? Um, minimum of five minutes. Yeah, I rest it. Say, say it takes me about four minutes to, to cook a medium rare steak, a thickish one. Um, then I rest it for four minutes. Yeah. Normally, it's the same time as when I cook it, I yeah. rest it. Is that four minutes? in an oven where the oven no. is preheated so just leave it you just leave it because the juices need to come together does it get cold up. then no you can cover it with some tin foil yeah. yes yeah. but okay, it mustn't so cook anymore. leave it be all right yeah. so there you have it jonathan that's how you do it especially if you're looking at uh national heritage day coming up and you'll be brying up a I'll storm a then judy marocha said i tried making sponge cake uh using cake flour mm. baking powder sugar eggs and oil and it practically turned into Dombolo. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss there? She asks. I like dumplings. So I'll be happy if that happens to me. <laughs> but, All right. But a sponge cake, the, the trick of a sponge cake is to um, beat your eggs till it's really fluffy yeah. and the sugar together. So that is where you get your air in. And then you need to fold the flour in. So it's a technique. Okay. That, and you must have everything ready. So your oven must be on and your, your tin needs to be prepared. Because a sponge cake, I don't even offer them to start because then they can fall off the fluid at the air. You yes, need that air so that you work super hard to get it in and if you're not ready yeah, while you're you doing just, this... Yeah. So you just put it in softly and then into the oven. And the thing is, your, all your ingredients need to be room temperature, it needs to be weighed out properly, it must also be a good recipe. Goodness! That's why <laughs> baking is a science. science. Yeah. Exactly. Alright, guess what, we've got a caller. Ooh. Russell on the line from Kimberley, I believe, is it? Good morning. How are you, Russell? I'm from Plain Excel. Excellent. Thank you so much for the call. What is your culinary conundrum? I don't know how to make a sweet and sour fish curry. How to make a sweet and sour fish curry? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there a special occasion you're making it for? Yes, on Sunday. Uh, who, what, what's happening on Sunday? We have a friend together and a friend bought a new house and we just like, you know, keep like a small part. Oh, nice one. Friend Ooh. bought a new house, housewarming present Ooh. there. Sweet and sour fish curry. Yeah. Ladies, get in there. Yes. I would take your onions. I will fry onions. Mm -hmm. I will um, add my spices, your masala. If you use a masala, your cumin, your ginger, your garlic, your grated garlic and everything. And you'll add tomatoes. And I will add a bit of tamarind to it to give him that sour, sour, sour taste. Tamarind. Okay. Tamarind. If you can find tamarind. And then a bit of sugar with it to give you that sweet and sour. And then I'll make like a little tomato base, like a base for this curry. And then I'll add the fish at the end just to cook through. Otherwise, you mustn't put it in in the beginning. When I'll it at my car, right? mm. So that's how I will make it. And what, what kind of fish are we looking at making? Would it be I a cake? But I can find buy it for now at my car, but like more mm. stable of fish. We still need to see. So, so a, a fish with more with more muscles yeah. that does that does more curls. Yeah. You know, like a like yeah. a like, a, well, like what? Like, King clipper will King definitely work. It's mm -hmm. definitely firmer. And then cut your blocks in quite biggish pieces. I can hold off on a grotere gestikke. And then it takes five minutes in that curry sauce, and it's done. But anders gaan jy dit overcook, overcook. 
Right. And Perfect. also cut them the same size. Also cut yes. them the same, the same size. Rate. Ladies, thank you very much. We'll be right back again and we'll keep our lines open on 021-430-9881 for the culinary hotline bling! Ting, ting, ting! Ting, ting, ting. ting. There you go. Well, you know what? When it comes to sunful holidays in the Mediterranean, they are so hot and popular right now. You look yeah. on your timeline and you feel like everyone is there, but why not try something different? Very nice. Well, traveling with Turkish Airlines, Zoe discovered a place that not only offers you a trendy vacation, but is also filled with history, culture, and a fantastic seaside life. And it's called Bodrum. On Turkey's Aegean coast, you'll find the country's own version of Saint-Tropez. The town of Bodrum is scenic, elegant, and offers all the fun of a Mediterranean holiday. From what was once a small fishing town, Bodrum has mushroomed into a haven for visitors seeking sun, warm, crystal clear waters, and a laid-back lifestyle. The coast is dotted with luxurious beach clubs that cater to the one million visitors who flock to this coastal gem every year to relax and have a good time. While Bodrum Centre is a great peek into history and a bit of shopping, it is the festive vibe that makes this place. The region is home to some of the hippest beach clubs, and this afternoon my hangout spot is the Majestu Beach Club in the trendy Yelikevat area. The party happened at the Majestu Beach Club. There was a DJ, you were on a deck, you were right by the water, people swimming, people lounging, people eating. You could really do anything you wanted right there. Despite the beautiful people chilling at the beach club, I had a cool moment. I got interviewed for a Turkish TV channel and it was really cool. There was moments of loss of translation, but hey, who cares? I had my moment on TV. The luxe chain of hotel resorts boasts properties in some of the most beautiful locations around the world. Their newest property, Lux Bodrum, is the group's first resort in Europe. I was genuinely surprised by Bodrum's beauty. Why is it one of your favorite places? It's a small area. All the luxury brands are uh, want to come in and settle down and uh, create a business. In Bodrum, people who want to be um, special, don't want to um, tackle with the hot weather. Weather is hot, but you don't feel humidity. So it makes it uh, special, actually. You can enjoy sea, sun, beaches, and then you can also go around um, and see some historical ruins, history of Turkey, you can find around the border. The Lux Bodrum's unique hillside to beachfront setting offers loads of natural light as well as a panoramic sea view in the floor to ceiling windows. The modern and minimalist look throughout the hotel extends to sleekly designed terraces and gardens, as well as a glamorous feel in the super chic rooms. Your beach club is one of Bodrum's best. Beach Rouge, actually, it is the largest and the biggest beach club in Bodrum with the private beach. This is special exclusion for our Lux Resort guests. This is the largest in, among all the other Lux hotels in the whole world. You've gone all out to give this resort some personal touches. What are some of your favorites? We have an um, actual uh, phone booth. You can actually call your home free of charge anywhere in the world. We hit um, small bottles around the island. We call them message in a bottle. When you find this uh, bottle, there's a present for you inside. You just have to look for it early in the morning or late in the afternoon. You can put your wish on the three of wishes. And then uh, once a year, we collect all these wishes. And there's a one lucky winner, earn a week vacation in our resort. Wishes do come true if you only believe in them. Now, some might blow on a dandelion or flip a coin into a well. I'm going to add my wish to the resort's tree of wishes. Now, you're not allowed to look, otherwise it's not going to come true. But I do wish that you get to experience this place too. Here in Bodrum, life can indeed be a dream when you visit a destination that's this kind of beautiful. Now, would you like to enjoy exploring Turkey as much as Zoe did? Well, Club Travel is offering you an eight-night package that will introduce you to some of Turkey's most special locations. And they're offering it to Expresso viewers for only 12,170 rand. And for more information and to book your trip to Turkey, visit clubtravel.co.za. And there's even more, right, that's Zoe? That's right. Well, you could also win a trip to Turkey, and that's courtesy of Turkish Airlines. All you have to do is tell us why you would like to explore Turkey. 
Nikki. Head on over to Expresso Morning Show on Facebook and comment on the competition post. The prize will include two flights to Istanbul on Turkish Airlines and a three-night stay in the city. Now, the competition will close on the 21st of September. That is literally a few days away, but those T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com. Turkish Airlines, widen your world. Well, welcome back in the kitchen. You know what's happening right now. Our lines are open on 021-430-9881. It's the culinary hotline. Bling! A ching, a ching, a ching. Yeah. Get in there. Um, give us a call, by the way, if you have any questions to ask. Let's take one from Facebook that came through from Kelly Skelebukhile Mapanga, who said, what's the difference in the ingredients between panna cotta and creme brulee? Okay, so a panna cotta, we made one earlier. Yes. It's effectively a very fancy jelly. It's a setting agent is gelatin okay and it's basically sugar milk gelatin and whatever flavoring you want to add vanilla mm -hmm. whatever rocks your boat mm -hmm. um, a creme brulee is effectively a baked custard so the setting agent's not gelatin it is egg yolks okay. and then that goes you make a basic custard pop it in little ramekins in the oven it goes in the bain marie and you cook it until it's set and then you put the sugar on top and you caramelize it with a blowtorch if mm -hmm. you've got one with your grill if you don't have one and that's it so some of the same ingredients but the one has eggs one has gelatin so okay but both evenly delicious absolutely <laughs> all right <laughs> okay we've got a caller uh, on the line right now this is vanessa all the way from east london hi vanessa hi vanessa how are you oh it's so good to hear your voice again <laughs> what is your, your your culinary conundrum today vanessa Okay, Kate, listen, every time, I want to ask Nella Lizette, every time I make puff pastry, okay? Yes. Um, I, I roll it up thin, and then I cook my stuff on, I put inside my uh, puff paste, then I roll it up, egg wash it in the oven. And when I start cutting it when it's done, why is it still raw, the puff pastry on the inside? Ah. Kate, I need help. Okay, <laughs> Vanessa, we are at your aid right now. Thank you so much. Send love to everyone in, the, in East London there. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. We friendly people. <laughs> did you put the Did you put the ingredients in the puff pastry, like in a pie, before you bake it, or did you first bake the puff pastry? No, I, I, uh, I put it in uh, before I bake the puff okay. pastry. I think a good idea then is is to pre-bake because if your mixture on that you put inside, um, it's very moist. Mm -hmm. It moistens the the base of the pastry. Mm. So I would okay. suggest the base that you bake it say for about ten to fifteen minutes before, and then put the ingredients inside and just make sure that it's not watery but anders gaan jou deeg a soggy bottom mee there we go yeah, nobody yeah, likes yeah, soggy yeah. bottoms Bottom. Vanessa we don't yeah. like soggy bottoms when it comes to our baking all right yeah. <laughs> thank you have a lovely day <laughs> have a wonderful one Vanessa all right we're going to keep this question until after the ad break but in the meantime we'll keep our lines open on 021-430-9881 we'll be right back with the culinary hotline bling sing 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 <laughs> I'm a dreamer, a doer, I know the hustle, I just need my money to hustle for me. Let your money hustle for you. Get a bank account for 5 Rand per month and bank on the Nedbank app without using any data. See money differently. Nedbank.
Call us on your cell phone. Call the very hotline bling. That can only mean one thing. thing. When you give us a call on 0214309881, it's the culinary hotline bling. Sing, 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 sing. Yes, we're getting some very interesting questions, I've got to say. And uh, also from our callers at home, like Vanessa, who called us before the break. But we were here, okay? And we were yeah. looking at this beautiful Swiss roll. And this question came from uh, Halimi Bibi Gani on Facebook, who says, um, please help me find the perfect recipe for a Swiss roll. Thanks a million, guys. You rock. You rock for that question. We've got a perfect recipe because we've got a recipe here with only three ingredients. No way. So, and that's on the Espresso website. Excellent. So the, the thing is about a Swiss roll is the same as the sponge cake that we spoke about. Mm -hmm. You need to, you, you have to clit your eyes, yeah. beat them till they're <laughs> fluffy, then, and then add your sugar until it's fluffy, and then and then you sift this over and you fold it in slowly, yes, slowly. Yes, yes. So those are the three ingredients, and then you can add vanilla or whatever that you want to add to it to give it a bit of flavour. Done. In your paniki a line pan mm -hmm. um, it's a flat pan and then you bake it for about 10 to 12 minutes it all depends on the recipe what it says and then you prepare a, a, a wet cloth yes. with sugar on you pull off the paper you put whatever jam caramel whatever you want to put inside cream whatever and you roll it up slowly mm -hmm. and look at this no beautiful cracks. get that some of that get that angle in there no cracks that's the most important thing you want it nice and moist yes and a little bit puffy as well it's got to have yeah. some air in it yeah. and then of course the jam evenly spread or whatever cream you want to have on the inside making for delicious I are, you, are, you, are you salivating? Yeah. Yes, yes, Anel is salivating <laughs> right now. I can okay. just see caramel and cream and everything inside there. Bring it on. Let's quickly t stop your salivating for a second and answer this question from Lumisa Mnyazi uh, on Facebook. A very interesting question. She says, since we have water issues, I've been wondering when cooking rice, we add so much water, but then I've noticed that if I soak it overnight, the next day, uh, I drain the water and leave it for a bit to steam cook, it's cooking, right? So yeah. since I don't have a steam cooker, I can't do other meals and things like split peas and kidneys, uh, kidney soup. So what can I do about this? And uh, we had a very interesting conversation mm, about that. Mm. So water is cooking essentially. Yeah, water is cooking uh, uh, important, especially when you've got dry ingredients like rice or split peas that needs to be dehydrated, hydrated mm -hmm. again, yeah. you know, to get the water in. So you did, you said something um, earlier, it's about like using the water for potatoes that you cooked for your rice, yes. you know, to actually use your water and plan your meal accordingly. Yeah. But for soup, you are going to need a little bit of water. You know, you cannot replace the water, but you can use the water that you've cooked your potatoes in. You can use it for a soup. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I was so about to say, yes. 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 So, so if you are going to be cooking a three-course meal for yes. a Sunday and one of the, uh, the, the parts of it is potato, the other one contains rice, yes. the other one is soup, you could essentially use that same pot of water for all of these. Yeah, I, I, I think the water will get less. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Just keep adding to it. <laughs> Yeah. Rice comes last because it's going to suck up all the water. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So just plan yeah. ahead. I think it is a good idea. And then you do get waterless pots and pans that you can buy out there yes. that you don't use any water in. So that is also out there. So just think wisely that that yeah. is it. You can't use your bath water for this. Please. Oh, <laughs> Lordy Lord. Ah. Yo. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, Thimisa, thank you so much for that water wise and very conscious yeah. question. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be chatting to the ladies one more time, talking pizza afterwards mm. when we come back with the culinary hotline bling. Sing, sing, sing. All right, so volgende keer keir ons weer eens samen die heel nietste gezicht op ons gunsteling tijdskrip programma pas zelf. Voor je maar het zei keir zomaar ons voor ogen neemt van aan. Scoop die 29 ste seizoen van pas zelf af. Ik kan het amper niet geloven. Nie. Ons gaan nou met die man om zelf gezels, maar hier is het voor een gevoersmaak hier van wat ik kan verwachten van aan. Die nieuwe pas zelf seizoen is vier in vlam. Jan Braai maakt een poikje voor erfenisdag. Jimmel Biersem ontmoet Paul Rothman in Candice Bouchers' klein wolf. Ons nietste pasella aanbieder Viljema Rits bring sy pa saam werk toe. En ons loer in by die regisseers en jong acteers van Wesselinkie. Pasella is terug woensdag 37 op SABC 2. Daar zijn nou, vol je city lekker op die bank saam met ons meneer. Welkom terug. Baie, baie, dankie. Gaan het goed? Ja, dat gaan awesome. Het is so beautiful dag hier so in die kaap vandag, so ek my wat meer al mens heen. Ek sê altijd die kaap, dat hy show is een beetje af. Ja. Sy show af vandag, ja. Ons weet ons mama. Listen, maar ma, ek is baie blij, jy is nou deel van Pasella. Ek seker van, dit is een hele nieuwe ervaring vir jou ook. Um, dit is die heel eerste keer wat jy nou uh, op ons skerms op uh, Pasella gaan wees. Mm. Maar jy het ook een baie speciale 
uh, ervaring gehad met je pa op stel? Wat het jullie aangevang? Dit was goed school. Ons het saam met Jan Braai, hy so in kamps baie, het ons uh, bykie ge gebraai, saam met Jan Braai natuurlijk. <laughs> dit is wat Jan Braai, en, ja. Ja, dit is so, dit is eindelijk een van die dinge, soos op school het ek nooit gehad nie, bring jou pa werk toe, en sê wat hy doen in Braagor, en sê nou eens bring jou pa <laughs> okay. school toe werk toe, daar was hy nou. Oké. Okay. Um, ja, we just, we, ach, we had some fun, jy weet, het was rarig awesome geweest om om daar te hee. Ons het nie rarig baie geïnteract nie snaaks genoeg. Rarig, hoe kom ja. nie? Ek weet nie, dit was nie so in die script nie. Hoe is dit? In die structuur. So, jy was daar, jy was ja. daar, jy was, oké, okay, ja. nee, maar dit is oké. Okay. Ons kom elkaar die hele tyd sien, jy weet, kyk in termen van hoe jullie die, die inzetsels vervullen. Is het baie anders wat die gewoontes aan? Ek weet, jy is een werk op nawek gedoen, maar mm. um, as acteer, ek meen, hoe verskillend is die twee genres? Ja, yes, is baie verskillend, he, want ek meen, soos wat ons nou so praat, het ons nou bijvoorbeeld drie camera's moest om ons, wat daar so is het net... Ja, ja. ja. <laughs> het ons net single cam, so ek sal vir jou vraag vraag, en dan gaan jy al die antwoorde geen, en na die tyd gaan, kan die persoon helemaal weg gaan, en dan moet hulle vir my vraag vraag. Yes, yes. So ek moet al die vraag onthou, en die director Suzanne is baie nice, sy help my daarom met dit manier te skryf, en sovoors. Yes. Ja, en ons het een lekker, die ding wat het nice maak, is die spans om met wie ons werk. Dit is een groep lekker, en soos uh, Dieter Bruggen en Suzanne, is net sikke cool mens om met te werk, en hulle maak lewe rarig, makkelijk en lekker. Makkelijker, ja, ja. Dit, 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 dit is nogal sy uitdaging, moet sê, vir al daar wat jy net beskryf, ons noem het reverse, reversals of rewindals. Ja, en close-up. <laughs> en close-up, nee, nee, close-up. Um, weet jy, ek wil nie, jy moet baie, baie weggeen van um, wat nou nog verder gaan gebeur op hierdie seisoenie, maar het jy tenminste iets kon doen wat jy rechtig nog baie graag wou doen, gedurende die loop van Priscilla? Um, Nog nie rarig nie, so ek hient eindelik na die producers, ek wil bykie gaan skare hebben en staf, ah. maar ons het al cool goed gedoen, soos byvoorbeeld uh, bam slides gedoen van watervalle af, uh, bergfiets gereid teen, like downhill, uh, lekker rondgejaag, okay. um, baie, baie cool, goed, interessante goeders, as ek het so kan stel al, yes. maar ek sien uit na die so, meer extreme goeders. Die Ja, huh? onder die, I, I like extreme. Ja. Extreme, ja, ek hoop jy gaan die ouwe woord wat al die extreme goed is doen. Um, nou, sonder om verder weg te gee, wat is jy meest opgebonden oor vanaandse episode? Wat, uh, moet, wat moet mense recht op sit voor? Ek denk die Vaseline in Sessel gaan nice is, want dit is een movie wat nog nie op die silverskerm is nie. Okay. And I, I think it's going to be a, a, a very, very nice film. So ek kan nie wacht om te sien wat dit alles gaan behels en, en waar dit gaan nie, want dit is een, moos een, een voorgeskerm yes, boek. Yes, yes, yes. School, so, Ek het altijd op school gedoen, bijvoorbeeld met, uh, kom ons die Vila's kind of so, het ek altijd die film gaan kyk in plaas van die boek gelees. Mm, stout ne! Cheater! <laughs> maar jy het hier gekom, is ok. <laughs> Vol jy, baie baie dankie vir die saamkeer van Olgen, man. En weer eens, baie geluk. Baie baie dankie. Het was een lekker journey vir jou hierdie, ja. Ja, het is lekker om hier te gewees het. Yes, meneer, daar is ons met sommer een blad, dan gaan ons aan. Dank jy met jou. Vol jy, maar dit skyers, dan moet ons hier nie te gesig op Pascelle. So maak seker as jy graag wil kyk hoe Jan Braai een heerlijke poikie aan mekaar slaan vir erfenisdag, of jemelbeesim Paul Rothman sy kleinkie ontmoet, en vol jy kyk ook saam die sterre, soos jy gesê het van die nieuwe film Wasselinkie, skakel geris in om 37 vanaan op SABC 2, dis Pascelle, moet dit nie misloop nie. Ah, Vasilinki holds such uh, great memories for us mm. as youngins, those little tubs. Anyway, we're back in the kitchen. It's time for the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. One last question to take in. Of course, we'll keep our lines open if you call in time on 0214309881. But this next one, Yolandi Erasmus asked here. Hi, Expresso team. Hello. How, I would like to know, how can I make my own pizza? Mm. So you're at home, you want to treat the family and make your own pizza. Yeah. Oh, so lucky. It's so cheap. And yeah. so easy. Okay. The only thing you need is time. Okay. Patience right. is the most important ingredient. Basically, all it is is flour, a little bit of salt, salt. some sugar, because that helps to um, feed the yeast, yes. activate it, and it's effectively food for yeast. Mm -hmm. And then I always like adding a bit dash of olive oil. It's not strictly speaking necessary, but I think it makes a richer dough. Do you want to go extra virgin? Maybe? No? Does, no. It, does it matter? It doesn't really matter. No. So, but if you don't have olive oil, it's fine. Then just fine. leave it out altogether. An, oh, so you don't even have to use an no, oil? No, you don't have to use an oil at all. Okay. But I like it. Okay. okay. And then a little bit of lukewarm water to help the yeast start faster. Does cold water not work with yeast? Um, well, it ultimately will, but um, heat activates yeast, okay. so it just, so it just makes, makes everything faster. Okay. Yeah. So you, you want, uh. yes, and you want to have a firm <laughs> dough. Sorry, I think I might have just popped your uh, <laughs> um, dough. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of ready. You pop it onto a floured surface. Yes. And you need for minimum five, ten, uh, five or ten minutes. You okay. want to develop your glutens. Then in a bowl it goes to prove. This is my favourite part Until it's double in now. size. Uh, so it has to double in size, okay. Yes, yeah. at least. Beautiful thing. The, the, the part where you take it out of the bowl is my favorite part. Yes. Take it out. 
There we go. Just just let it let it go. Yeah, it's gonna let it go now. <laughs> look at that. Oh, look at yeah. all those bubbles. How, how it kind of just munels out of the out of the bowl. I love that. And I love the the, 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 the smell of the yeast. This it, texture is amazing. Isn't it beautiful? It feels amazing. No, what's wrong with you, Adele? <laughs> then you do this to it. Then you do this to it. Oh, okay, and, and then you, you yeah, <laughs> and this to it, and then you put everything that you like on top of here. Course. I see there's pepperoni, mm. anything, lots of cheese, herbs. I've recently become a big fan of just a standard, very good margarita mm. pizza. If it's very well made and the ingredients are, I mean, put on the pizza at exactly the right mm. time so you get the flavor out of each one of them. It's I went beautiful. to a, a restaurant in Napoli that serves only margarita pizzas and it's at a, it's a, the oldest pizzeria in Italy. Yes. And there's a queue outside. You Goodness. actually have to get in and the, old, the only pizza they sell is margarita. That's all. Yeah. That's yeah. all. I did the same so, in New York at the oldest pizzeria in the States. And, and my word, it's absolutely beautiful. But yeah. ladies, I've got to thank you so, so much for your wonderful contributions and expertise to our culinary hotline bling. We'll be doing it again next week when yes. we bring back the culinary hotline bling. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, still to come on your Feel Good Breakfast Show, we're talking about a literature boost for our young South Africans. And speaking of our young South Africans, your little ones, Nikki Bush still with us to discuss the, discuss the importance of touch. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> when you feed your dog's health, you also feed his happiness. And wonderful things can happen. Like he's able to go from zero to boundless get up and go. And a fluffier coat unlocks maximum cuddle potential because you're feeding the clinically proven nutrition of Hill's Science Plan. Precisely prepared with top quality ingredients. After all, when he's healthier, he's happier. And a dog's tail never lies. Given the science of happy, found in the brand recommended by vets worldwide. Clover. It's my feel good breakfast Love by Clover. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show on this uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just very distracted about what we're about to discuss because <laughs> people out there just really do the silliest things in the name of style. And we've seen articles recently about this new trend that's taking place in Bangladesh and India and Pakistan where barbers are literally <laughs> cutting their clients' hairs with, with flames. So what? it's called the fire cut and it involves spraying some sort of chemical oh, on your client's no. head, lighting it up on fire and then combing through the hair, the I flames. 
yeah. um, until you get to a specific style. I think, you know, it's lit, but it's it's too lit. They yeah. shouldn't be litting it, lighting it like that. It's Guys, not cool. There's anyway. nothing worse than burnt hair, the smell of burnt hair. It's no, insane. I one. mean, <gasps> what? I anyway, can, I uh, trust that. speaking of hairstyles gone wrong, we've uh, found a couple on the webs uh, that just really <laughs> make the webs on my head just go, no, no. These these are like, style like don't natural. do. The world's worst hair I, I saw this one really funny. It's the SpongeBob Square Pants. Get out. No, that's a no, pineapple. That's a pineapple. That's that's a pineapple. A, but, but it's, but, I mean, uh, okay. pineapples are quite well known and synonymous <laughs> with SpongeBob. Yeah, he's a pineapple that lives under Yeah, the yeah, sea. exactly. But I mean, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under the sea. SpongeBob inspired. What, what about then, this one? Yeah, the peak cap. How cool is that? The peak game. The peak game. And we found one called the fidget spinner. Uh, no. Well, obviously, somebody cutting a fidget no. spinner onto the back of your head. Why would you want to do that? Uh, there's one called the foundation brush. <gasps> the foundation brush. Oh, Lord, this is help too much. us. I cannot. Um, 13 going oh, on why? 16. It's why? a thing. Trying to gain maturity. How about the Nintendo? Ninten don't. The Nintendo. Oh, my <gasps> Lord, oh, Kudo. The facial hair. Crest to wow me. Wow. Why would you. I don't. Oh, the, oh, this one is called the purity ring. Excuse me. This is the purity yeah. ring. The Nintendo don't looks like this. So it's, so I don't know what's going on. He's so he's shaving. I think what will be a Nintendo console. Oh, oh it's Mario! Whoa! He's painting it. It's super that ping, is crazy. ping, 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 ping. But You're, then like so now, do you have to paint your face like that every your head like that every morning. Yeah, because you, you have to sleep hard. like this in order for it to actually <laughs> do or mean anything. Anyway, uh, make sure you head on over to our Facebook page where we've posted some of these incredible, marvelous hairstyles, and let us know which one you think is the best or worst. Interesting stuff indeed. I think I'll just keep to the, the normal haircuts for now. But uh, right now, on to a rather feel-good story. Now, it was uh, our late Tata Madiba's dream that every single child in South Africa has access to quality education. And it doesn't matter their age, because this is where it becomes important. Early childhood development forms neural pathways that create a framework as to how they will learn for the rest of their lives. At just three years old, Lynn can read big words thanks to an innovative learning program that has helped hundreds of children find their love of reading from an early age. South Africa have got a major crisis, literacy-wise. We are basically last in the world when it comes to the annual national assessment test done on children concerning their literacy and numeracy skills. Smart Brain does two things. First of all, we solve all kinds of reading problems by teaching children the 44 sounds that makes up the language. But secondly, we prevent reading problems from ever occurring by helping mothers and caretakers to start with their babies and start with their preschool children to lay down a good reading foundation so that their children can excel from a young age and never have to, have to struggle with any problems at school. Thirty-four. Excellent. Twenty. Early childhood development prepares children for school, but it's also the age range where the brain develops most rapidly, a fertile ground for learning numeracy and literacy. We're motivated by um, a child's ability to learn. We wanted it to be um, ready for, for, for school. And uh, that's actually what motivated us to, to enroll in Smart Brain. She has responded very well, and the benefits has been uh, her ability to remember uh, the words, and especially in mathematics. And uh, there has also been a benefit in, in her reading abilities at this young age. It's scientifically proven that children who participate in good early childhood development programs perform better academically and are more likely to be successful as adults. If a child enters grade one, formal schooling, Without the foundations, that child struggles. When those children get to grade 10, we see a huge drop-off in uh, school attendance. Uh, and in South Africa, of, of every 100 children who start grade one, only 50 make it to grade 12. And of that, only 30 pass. And the, the reason is lack of early learning opportunities. What's this? Teddy bear. Teddy bear. Pop. Wow. 
Learning at such a tender age isn't costly. Parents can create learning opportunities by engaging their child's senses and using meaningful interactions. A child needs to hear, a child needs to see, and a child needs to feel. And a child needs to hear that permanent voice of its mother all the time, teaching it, teaching it, teaching it. It's 15 minutes a day. That's all is required of a mom, to give the child the necessary foundation so that they don't battle in school. Every child is born with a, an enormous potential of 100 billion brain cells and just waiting for a mother or a caretaker to start programming those brain cells. If I teach a baby five new facts, the brain can make 120 connections. So obviously, the more information I give to the brain, the more networks the brain can make and the, and the cleverer the kid will become. By investing in our children's early development, we don't only create smarter young people, but we also nurture an entire generation that loves to learn. Very cool indeed, but it is a beautiful day here in the Mother City. Hope you are enjoying this Wednesday morning still with us. Right now, we are sticking with uh, early childhood development. We are back with our parenting expert, Nikki Bush, talking about the importance of touch. So we now continue our discussion around needing to de-stress, declutter our lives and minimalize our lives, remove the chaos and bring in a little simplicity. Nikki Bush has got some absolute gems in this regard and I can see that you're on this path yourself. Uh, we're all on a journey. We haven't quite arrived there yet, but um, this is obviously an area where you try to apply a lot of what you are, are talking about and, and putting out there into the market as well. I know one of our biggest issues that we have in trying to create a more simplistic life is that we've got this constant clutter, messaging, marketing, fast food, social media. We are being bombarded by these messages all the time. How much of an effect does these kind of this clutter have on our children? How do we combat that? So gratitude, I think, is an important thing, is that every day to be grateful for what you have and to get rid of what you don't need. I mean, things pile up and pile up. You've got kids who outgrow their clothes, their toys, and they gather dust. And it's so refreshing to actually sort these things out with your children and to give away. It's a wonderful feeling to be able to help others with stuff yeah. you no longer need. That's a good thing. And then when it comes to consumerism, you mentioned that constant marketing, that barrage of buy me, yeah, buy me, buy me. Uh, some, some families who are decluttering and going for the more simplistic lifestyle, and this is a very conscious effort. They prefer to shop, for example, at markets, at organic markets on the weekend. It becomes a family thing to go and do an the experience. slow life. You know, yeah. it's an experience, do the slow life thing, as opposed to buying into the big retail environments. This is a conscious choice. Some families want to buy organic, eat organic. That's, that is also quite demanding, actually, and that's almost a lifestyle. And financially, it can it, require a shift. Yes, there is yes. A, a, an end result that could benefit you, but it's difficult for the majority of South African families to sure, do that. Sure, sure. And then let's look at technology. You know, when we're constantly plugged into devices, they demand our time and attention all the time. I must respond to the SMSs, the WhatsApps, the emails. And eventually you feel like you're in a push me, pull you situation where there's, there's never no demand. And we also need to say this time is sacred family time. We are going to have no devices over dinner. Stop. Let that humming stop around you and just experience being together with no demand. And I think if we can do that for a few minutes every day, where we can just engage with each other and really tune really connect, in, yeah. you know, that, that real connection. The minute you have a television on in the background while you're eating, for example, it takes away from the number of words that you actually speak to each other, even if you're not actually watching it. And children, if you put them in an environment where there is no Wi-Fi, just for a weekend, <clears throat> they get to experience what it means to not be on. And they go, wow, this feels quite different. You know, they, they're actually quite aware that there's no demand for response. That, that and they can just be in the moment. Yeah. Um, I think a great way to do this from our own experience and looking back is to get outdoors. Yes. Just to experience nature where everything, your, your environment is shifting by the second, but there's something so stimulating and rewarding about that. Also that sense of space. 
that wide open space because when we say we feel overwhelmed we're almost feeling boxed yeah, in claustrophobic, yeah. you're feeling caged and it's to work out what are the sources of that stress that makes you feel caged and can you get rid of that stress or as you say go out into the, into the open spaces, wide open air. In fact, I took myself to gym the other day after a really, really stressful day. In fact, I hadn't been uh, to gym for a week because I'd been on a road show speaking all over it's the country. No good. It's no good. <laughs> and it was such a revelation that just taking myself yeah. into the exercise space, like people who run experience this. Just a little reset, yeah. And it was a reset button and I felt so much calmer afterwards. It's amazing and you're looking to change everything else your financial situation all these things to make yourself feel happier and all you need to do was run for <laughs> yes. half an hour um the answers are there thank you so much nikki i think it just involves us as parents being conscious about the choices that we make you're not a slave to your life you are the master of your own life and your destiny and your child's so make it a choice to get out there and experience more just free up your own self and your life Every Friday, it's Winner Home on Afternoon Express, South Africa's premier interior design reality competition, proudly brought to you by Private Property, where you can follow the journey of three competing design duos as they decorate three homes, one room at a time. But, and if you vote for your favorite design duo, you stand to win some amazing prizes. That's right. Well, you know what? The grand prize is worth three million rand, and that's your choice of one of three completed homes at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate, and as decorated by the design contestants with finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone and premier appliances by Grundig. Now you also automatically get entered to win incredible prizes in the bi-weekly giveaway and the current prize is a Groer Eurocube sink mixer professional valued at over 12 thousand rand that's pretty amazing well follow the fun and excitement on Winner Home and you could win big <laughs> This is your chance to win the home you've always dreamed of. SA's favorite interior design reality competition, Winner Home, sees three design duos transform empty spaces into lavish homes. And one of them could be yours. To enter, visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. Put yourself in line to win amazing prizes in the bi-weekly draw and automatically be entered for a chance to win the grand prize. Your choice of one of three fully designed homes in the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate in the south of Joburg. The finished property will include luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone as well as premier home appliances by Grunding with a total prize value of more than 3 million rand. Competition details plus T's and C's can be found on the private property website. Watch the breathtaking properties come to life as the design drama unfolds and stand a chance to win the biggest prize on South African television, your very own dream home. Wow. 3 million rand that house, Baba. Just like that. Can you man, just, just, just slot yourself in there. Like, just your life like changes that. just like, like that. Uh, no house? House. House. No house. Like house. Koi. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate the 10th anniversary of a direct flight between Cape Town and Istanbul, Turkish Airlines has a special gift for you. Flying direct from Cape Town, enjoy a stopover in Istanbul and get complimentary accommodation while you take in the spectacular views, incredible food and do a tour or two before making your way to your destination. It's the perfect break on your travel adventure. So come and enjoy the country known for its hospitality and good food like I did. Turkish Airlines, widen your world. I am a South African and I am very, very proud to be a South African. I think as South Africans, we've got so much to be proud of, of how far we've come as a country. We really do represent who and where South Africa is right now. And I think we have a responsibility to take on board that we are creating our heritage every day for future generations. We have a legacy to leave. Of course, where we've come from, where we're going to as a people, I think we are incredibly resilient and I think the best is still yet to come. South Africans express themselves through arts and culture. Our music tells our stories while our dances, be it traditional or guara guara, reflect our emotions. With just some wire and beads, artists ensure future generations can see their heritage. Girl, she goes for us. 
vuz vuz ma da yar as cruz cruz what I love so much about South African heritage is the, is, the, is the multicultural society that we have. I think about all of the festivities, the music that come with it, the paraphernalia, the brais and the slides of all the moments when we have felt that we as a nation are as united and can be the very best that we can be. Food is a huge part of South African culture and we can be proud of our unique cuisine. From our boudabosh and chakalaka to bunny chows and milk tart, our culinary heritage is a mixed masala from different ethnicities and nothing is as delicious as our diversity. <laughs> <laughs> we brought Bura Baras <laughs> South Africa is an incredibly beautiful place. We've got amazing places, we've got amazing food, but what I love most about us is our people and the diversity of our people. I think, you know, just looking at the beautiful landscape we have, looking at the different cultures that all can come together as one, I think that truly makes South Africa really, really unique. We as South Africans can be proud that our country is home to eight World Heritage Sites, from Robben Island in the Western Cape to the cradle of humankind in Gauteng. There are places in our great nation that are part of important pieces of world history. I think our natural heritage is what also stands out for me. Right here in Cape Town, we have Table Mountain, one of the seven natural wonders of the world, which is phenomenal on our doorstep. The sites that we have, the garden route is just around the corner. Up north, we have Mahuba's Kluwef and also God's Window, which is world renowned. So once again, proudly South African, this is my home. <laughs> When I spit in Setswana sometimes, I do feel that I'm, I'm playing my part in contributing towards our beautiful rainbow nation. <laughs>feel good breakfast show it's espresso right here on sabc3 time for us to find out the answer to our show emoji charades game this morning the clue that we gave you was that it's based on the character of a masked outlaw a mysterious swordsman one person said vikings the other person said you know what the clues gave it all away it's a uh, samurai jack but no the actual answer is and i shall read uh, Stephen, who said the mask of zorro or even the legend of zorro so to all of you that got it right well done we'll play our emoji charades game next week same time, same place. Yeah, and tomorrow we'll be bringing you more feel-good vibes as soul, reggae and R&B singer-songwriter Sira Mesiditi will be joining us to perform live on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Oh, absolutely incredible. And then we're also creating awareness around International Alzheimer's Day, something very important. Absolutely. Then we're also heading into the wild as we do on a Thursday, talking about Game Rangers and World Rhino Day. That's upcoming. That's the 22nd of September. Mm -hmm. It's World Rhino Day. A big focus on our beautiful rhinos indeed. And there was so much to explore about boardroom. Tomorrow we'll do the same, but this
this time you'll see my adventures on a really cool and beautiful yacht. So, Excellent stuff. Yeah. Listen, before we go, uh, we're going to invite Leanne in as we share a piece of very worthwhile Wednesday wisdom with you that in life you're going to go out there, uh, you're going to face a lot of challenges. And when you do face these challenges, <laughs> don't be that guy. Or cat. What? Wait, what? cut off the cat trying to escape. Don't be that guy, you know? Don't Face be that them guy. bravely. <laughs> Conquer your day. Have a wonderful one. Face your fears. But how about that scream though? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was that was at least uh, an B flat. B flat. B flat just they're on the other side of Topsy. But anyway, uh, we've got to go guys. We'll see you again bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful Wednesday. <laughs> just say out there. Bye. Bye. Espresso Morning Show, made with love by Clover. Uh, never feel good production.